Hello and welcome to Generation Shadow, the epic supernatural saga that takes you through the entirety of horror history one nightmare at a time. This nightmare is our special one-shot entitled This Ain't the Summer of Love, set in Los Angeles, 1969. We'll get right into it, uh, but first, let's meet our players and the characters who they are playing before we begin this groovy adventure. So I want to know who you are, who you're playing, and sort of uh, I mean, what their vibe is in 1969. And also, we have a very, very special guest that I'll introduce uh, when we get to her. But let's start with Marvin. So hi, I'm Marvin, and today I'm bringing back the original Spectre, Captain Diego Wensley. And he's been around for a while, a couple centuries now. And he's kind of made peace with the fact that uh, he's a ghost wandering the world on his ship, the Sanguine Tide. But he's serving a special role in this case. He's kind of the Grim Reaper for supernaturals now. Mm. Basically, anyone who's supernatural or aware of the supernatural dies, he offers them a chance to come aboard the ship and just figure out what they want to do at this point. Whether they want to move on, want to stay, serve people, whatever they will. But if they're specifically evil individual, well, let's say they have a role in Davy Jones' locker. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Captain Diego, a uh, big fan of him since our, our first two arcs. He might have pop, I think he's kind of took a little, little bit of a break. I know he's been down in the world, of course. He showed up as an NPC in a few, uh, few series, so it's very cool to have him back with Marvin back in the uh, manning the wheel. <laughs> Next up, we have Eve Panish. This is my own mother, who has been nice enough to join us. I've decided, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it sort of in the family. <laughs> I know, I know, my mom has done some role playing before, so I really wanted to. Uh, you know, to share this, and maybe we can get her her unique perspective on uh, on all things role playing. Right. So, mom, who well, are you playing? I am playing Salome, the hippie fairy. They say if you can remember the '60s, you weren't really there. <laughs> well, I don't know if I was there or not, but peace, love, and occasionally a little wild fury. <laughs> Amazing. Next up is Patrick. Hello, I am playing the Tainted Shin. Not much is known about him, except he's just kind of uh, acts as an enforcer for uh, Lord Lars and some of the different members of the Wild Faction, which is actually where he's uh, currently at work at the moment. Uh, though I, I think that Shin might have some disagreements on who the actual Grim Reaper is, to be honest. Wow. Two being Reapers? That, being that his patron is a King of Hell. <laughs> Whoa. Well, I self-appointed myself the role. <laughs> yeah, that may be a problem. <laughs> Interesting. I haven't heard anyone say anything bad about it. Yet. <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us once again is Nick. Yep. As you said. And today I will be playing the hunter James Calderon. He's, once again, from a, from a family of hunters, um, actually distant relatives to the Montclair family, whom uh, our, our, our previous hunter from the last season, uh, Loretta Boaton, was a descendant of. Ah, so he's been sort of, he was at first not too keen on being a hunter, and then he heard about what Loretta was doing and how successful she was, so he doubled down on his training and now is on his first official solo mission. Oh man, a novice wet behind the ears monster hunter. Yeah. <clears throat> he's, very uh, book, he's very book learned. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I love it. All right, well, let's let's dive into it. Um, first, I do want to say I just got to kind of do a. I, I I mentioned this before, but there's the uh, the role playing game safety mechanism of lines and veils, which is lines being like lines that should not be crossed and things that we do not want at all in in the uh, in the show. And then veils being stuff that we know exists, but we're not going to discuss it in any detail because it would be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, for this one, because it's 1969 and the Manson family is going to be involved. Uh, yeah, it's old, old Charlie Manson's in there in the NPC list. Uh, but I'm going to do a veil about against the um, the Tate LaBianca murders. 
Um, this all takes place before that happened. So I mean, he still he was doing lots of bad stuff before uh, before <clears throat> that particularly horrible bad thing. But that is, you know, it's a real life tragedy. And I just wouldn't feel comfortable like having it in our in our role playing game. So that's it. Will it, you know it's going to happen in the future of the game? But we're not going to go into uh, detail about it. All right, I'm going to read a quick little introduction to the uh, to the setting, and then we'll kind of talk about the deaths and how you fit into the factions in 1969 LA. Los Angeles, 1969, a West Coast wonderland for assorted dopers, freaks, runaways, flower children, and counterculture kooks seeking a new version of the American dream. But this dream has a dark side, a nightmare born out of the Vietnam War, reactionary government crackdowns, and ancient evil lurking in New Age spirituality. Amongst the love-ins, be-ins, and groovy get-togethers, four powerful factions have driven to prominence. The Federal Bureau of Unexplained Phenomena, operating under the FBI and a senile, paranoid J. Edgar Hoover, is intent on infiltrating and destroying any occult organization. It sees as a threat to the American way. Always holding a place in their files, the Road Wolves Motorcycle Club, a pack of disaffected motorcycle riding lycanthropes spreading hell across Southern California. They've entered into an uneasy alliance with the children, a growing confederation of New Age wizards seeking occult patter, power no matter the cost. Finally, the eldritch beings of Fairyland have reemerged, ready once again to accept worship and power. It's a roller coaster, and like everyone in Southern California in 1969, including sleazoid grindhouse film producer Stephen Doc Schlock Schlosser, they've bought the ticket. Now they have to take the ride. <laughs> So let's go around and talk about uh, the deaths and how you fit into this world. So we'll start with our, our monster hunter. James, <laughs> yep. who do you owe and who, who owes you? So this is actually very, very appropriate. Someone has enlisted you to protect them from some something very dangerous. They owe you a debt. I think that'd be Doc Schlock. That'd be Doc Schlock. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> yep. So he owes me, they owe me a debt. So. He owes me a debt. Uh, someone keeps you equipped and supplied. I owe them two debts. I was thinking our good friend Alexei Irvin. Oh, okay. So you yeah. so you actually have a connection. And this is he is um and so Alex Irvin or Alexei Irvin, yeah. he is in the FBI. He's part yes. of the uh, you know the Bureau of Unexplained Phenomena. So that's, yeah. so you have like kind of a government contract. There. A little bit, yeah. I've, oh. Whenever I I sort of went out with my family before this this mission they had their their hands in the FBI or sorry not the FBI the the FBUP BUP BUP yes F buck F buck F buck Federal Bureau of Unexplained Phenomena yep all right so great name yep oh thank you and then finally, you consider someone a friend, even though the friendship keeps you keeps bringing you trouble. They, <laughs> they owe you a debt. And so I was thinking our, our tainted Shin. So I worked with him a few times, and I believe I was, I think I was friends with you before you... Probably, received, yeah. Oh, which makes past sense, life, life makes sense yeah. Yeah. online here as well, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so, cool. All right. Yeah, um, if, you, if you ever come up with a name... Feel free to tell me. <clears throat> yeah, the original, yeah, <laughs> be before you became Shin. That's yeah. cool. Um, so Shin, how about how about your debts? Yeah. So uh, mine is you're protecting someone from a dark power. They owe you two debts. <laughs> of course, I think we knew who that is. Doc Schlock. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah. dude this dude needs protection oh, apparently. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you'll, 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 you'll see what he's up to. Man. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is someone is trying to save you and keep suffering for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you owe them two debts, and that's going to be... Uh, what's your name again? Sorry. James. James. Oh, I can see you're, you're the bad friend, he's the good friend trying to set you on the right path. It's a toxic friendship. It's too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, friendship is, is a strong word I'm there. still greenhorn, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, and the last one is you have a demon patron who holds the contract of your soul. I owe them three debts. Yeah. What, uh, what, what, is, is, what is your demon patron? Uh, that is Yama. Whoa. Though technically, the person who holds the contract is Lord Lars because they gave me the sword. And as part of the contract, I'm to erase who I was to accept this new mantle of being Shin. Which is actually the spirit that possesses the sword. Mm, okay. 
I like it. Essentially, this is just a human vessel vessel for the soul. Oh man, the chin has taken over. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mundane chin still exists there, mm. but tainted form is totally just straight sword chin. No, I like it. It's uh, I mean, we have we have sort of a, a precedent for like for evil evil swords in this. Uh, That's true. We do, <laughs> don't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they just seem always so evil. I mean, I like, know. if you're gonna have a possessed item, it's either an, a ring, an amulet, or a sword. Yeah. <laughs> it's very true. You gotta have the evil sword. Never, it's not possessed tchotchkes. <laughs> <laughs> possessed little. It's gotta be something useful. Class. Sal Salome. Okay. Who, who's, uh, what about balls. your deaths? Okay, well, first of all, says so someone broken in a. Um, well, okay. Um, promise and they owe you some d debts and that's Lord Lars because I guess I because he keeps I help him keep the party going <laughs> and then you're keeping something hidden for someone they owe you a debt and I was thinking Belinda Blight oh wow. and the reason would be this we both went to Berkeley together although she was criminal justice major and I was majoring in uh, Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> but we sort of knew each other, and, and you know, every so often in the coffee houses. And, um, and basically, every so often, even though I'm anti war, sometimes I let her know some stuff that's going on. In the oh man, you, you drop a dime on, a, on the weather underground? underground. Every, so, yeah. every so often, just for my old friend's sake, you know, because. You, us women gotta stick together. <laughs> so Belinda Blight and I have a little something on the side there. Ooh, so that's I like gonna it. be then something. Okay, and I guess the last one is I've entrusted somebody with a dangerous task. And um, I'm gonna ask them if they this is okay, succeeded. Or failed. Or failed. It could be somebody around here. Here, I mean, right. I was thinking right. as I'm already ingrained in the wild Monster. faction, specifically underneath Lord Lars, that if someone has a task that they need to be done, generally yes. goes to a taint. It's probably me. Yeah. Yeah, that would make right. sense. You're yes. like, you know, you're the enforcer. Right. right. Probably failed. Right. <laughs> oh. Okay. okay. So you fail to keep things yep. uh, safe for us. As as free. Un un unfortunately, so that is um, sometimes Fair. how it goes. Okay. Things things just broke bad. Yep. Okay. It was probably brand new, being Shin. Mm -hmm. They wasn't aware of exactly what they were doing, and things probably just went belly up. Mm, okay. Okay. So you probably right around the middle. Of the event, just like, ooh. <laughs> oh, like, Your tainted form just ran out at the wrong moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it comes from the sword, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Captain Diego. I know we've we've had this character before, but because we got some new new NPCs, new players, do you want to, like, change any deaths? Or have, uh, what, what, what do you think they would be? Well, of course. It's been literal centuries, don't you know? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> but the one constant I have, someone, or someone's progenitor, was involved in my death. And guess who's part of this party? <laughs> 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 see Claggett, of course. Uh, yeah, gotta be Claggett. <laughs> Claggett just can't escape you, can I know, all these years, he's crossed oceans, he survived too. But he can't live down the fact that he uh, signed your death warrant way back in the day. Uh, which which uh, what turns out several different members of the games in the past have I know, I've been involved in that. that. Yeah. Which is, I think, hilarious. But as yeah. we found out, who's directly responsible is most important. <laughs> and this guy's directly responsible. Oh, Gontry. Was it Gontry? <laughs> no, it was It was Clint. It was Clint. <laughs> it was good, because I already have a character trying to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, several characters trying to kill him, I think. Yeah, very confusing. Second death. Yeah, Someone is watching yeah, out yeah. for a family Actually. member of mine. Yield him two deaths. Well, since he's, well, he's you know, 400 right, so. years old, he doesn't really have any living so. yeah. But yeah. I would think he's looking after the descendants of some old friends. Particularly, okay. he's sold. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. And someone who he would have looking after her is another descendant of an old friend, Miss Roxy DeForest. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, de yeah Roxy DeForest. 
Uh, she is the descendant of Roxanne DeForest. Mm-hmm. Hey, Roxette, Roxanne and Lafay family, they go back quite a ways. Oh, absolutely. Is it, wasn't it the same descendancy from the French arc too? Oh yeah, yes. They, so. Yeah, their line can voice. be traced all the way back to uh, <laughs> pre-revolutionary France to it's, Victorian London. It's an older family than <laughs> than uh, my werewolf family. No, so. Ionesca is pretty old too. Ionesca is fairly old, yeah. But in, it, in the linear stakes of yeah, our what we built with, the world, the Ionesca is the oldest. The Ionesca is old, are only two generations, I believe, right now. Maybe three. Interesting. Uh, I believe the the De Forests are at least three. Well, they're yeah, bands. they're. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then the last step, I'm haunting someone and they know it. <clears throat> and who would that be? The bastard making a movie after me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's Ooh, why yes. he needs protection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't you hate it when you're making a film and the actual subject shows so, up to be a ghost? Are you saying that you're the dark part that I'm protecting him from? <laughs> yes. Oh, great. I'm haunting him. <laughs> All right, well, let's get down to the, some of this haunting and the actual story itself. <laughs> We're going to begin on set of the great movie that Doc Schlock is making. Pig and Pirates Sail for Satan. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> great name. This is definitely... 1960s. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's going right to the grindhouse, double bill with, like, machete maidens unleashed, that kind of thing. Um... <laughs> Lots of sleaze, lots of action, and they are, of course, filming some outdoor scenes at Vasquez Rocks, <laughs> famous L.A. film location. Yeah. Right now, doubling for, as Doc Schlock would say, I don't know, it's in the Caribbean or something, right? <laughs> That's where all them pirates were. They had rocks That's in there, valid. didn't they? Yeah, I'm sure they did. So, right now, the kind of uh, cast and crew taking, you know, taking five after uh, a particularly bad uh, rendition of... <laughs> Captain Diego, like, dispensing some some horrible uh, Tom Savini-style special effects added, <laughs> re- you know, bloody revenge on some uh, some py- some other rival pirates or something. Can I manifest real quick? <laughs> well, let me, let me You're just doing this wrong! <laughs> <laughs> I will say, Dog Sock is just called Cut. You guys, or you three at least, are all kind of a little bit, you know, back behind the scenes. And he's about to set a turnover and face you, and then suddenly... I'm going to mark one corruption to only be heard. <laughs> I'm going to say, you you all serve board the tide for this. <laughs> <laughs> Doc Schlock's like, oh, I tell highly, me you didn't hear that. I did. Whoever said that, I highly doubt it because this is just a stupid movie based on a stupid guy. They're getting it wrong. <laughs> I'm sure they are. This is Hollywood. Hey, please. Off Hollywood. You're right. Sorry, my They won't let me back on Hollywood proper after, uh, well, I won't get into that. My apologies. They they kicked them out for being wrong. (laughs) No, they kicked them out for much worse than being wrong. Look. Neither here nor there. (laughs) My Abraham Lincoln biopic, (laughs) they said they had too many fight scenes. I said didn't have enough. Like, hold on. When they were fighting the vampires, I get it. (laughs) Totally understandable. It, you know, honestly, the movie is just ahead of its ahead of its time. And like, exactly. Thank forty you. years, fifty years, there'll be a movie that's just as bad <laughs> and somehow more popular. <laughs> Thank you, because we're out here. We're not making history. We're making art. <laughs> no. Sure. Who is talking, by the way? What is this voice? Could I use book learning? Oh, see if you recognize the spirit. <laughs> This, yeah, go for yeah, it. Yeah, this this is a move that I have that says, when I encounter a supernatural cre- creature, roll with mind. On a hit, the M- the MC will tell you a bit about it and how it can be killed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's an eight. Can I interfere? <laughs> uh, not not for this one. <laughs> He's searching. I mean, Captain Diego is a legendary figure. He probably knows who you are. <laughs> However, I'm not going to tell you how he can be killed. Because why not? He's a ghost. It's only I only got an eight. So, but yeah. yeah, and so I would say with that, like, you you probably know the the details of Captain Diego's demise, mm-hmm. the story of his legend, um, and like you know what he is now as this kind of good good guy. flying Dutchman figure that right. goes around, uh, you know, fighting for justice. All right, so with that, I'll be like, you know, Captain, you have a lot that you're doing outside of this. Why are you hanging around here? Well, if somebody was making a movie about you and they filled it with squawk and just 
Skus, art. Bitches. It's art. Squawk. <laughs> uh, and that's art. an old word. <laughs> don't make me use the newer ones. <laughs> but no, wouldn't you want to show up and just see how you can, I don't know, fix the sorry travesty no. of an art project? Honestly, I haven't been around long enough doing, my, doing <clears throat> this work to, to really say anything about that. But I want to go back to when they're making a stupid, shitty movie about me. No, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> I would rather be much better off dead in my grave. Well, why don't you go join that? them? <laughs> well, if I could, would I be here? Would I be an? I reach for the. Entity? I reach for the. Song. I'm going to attempt to uh, unleash the devil inside. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not let you roll that. Nothing else is going to happen. Okay. Huh? Okay. As, after you, after you, um, you can go ahead and roll, and we'll see you transform. <laughs> All right, buddy. Go ahead. That's a... Okay, so that's a success, so I'm going to choose one. Um, I am going to... Because <clears throat> it really it doesn't really matter. I'm going to choose a demonic weapon. And suddenly you see me... What's my descriptors? <clears throat> uh, I grow a set of horns. My entire vision becomes smoky and kind of clouded. Uh, skeletal almost. And my eyes are just glowing. And I'm just like, pull the sword out. I could reap you if you prefer. Send you to the afterlife. I'm nervous. Send you to Send you to King Hem, to King Yama. I don't. I not. Is that Confucianism? <laughs> Doc Schloss, like, please look. We can all get in touch with Eastern spirituality a little bit later. Chin. Save it for the cameras, Chin the same or maybe way. not. But anyway, look. The reason I got you all here, not just the voices in my head and our heads. I got some real problems. From what I hear from some of the. Uh, the, the best boy, the grip, and so on. There's some, some biker gang out here following us around, trying to steal some of our valuable props. And in fact, I think this is the real reason of the hauntings going on. I paid do top dollar for some authentic, actual, honest-to-God pirate props to add a little bit of versimilitude <laughs> to my picture. And I'm afraid that some of these... So this, this biker gang is going to... And as he's saying this... The rumble of engines fills the air, along with the howl of wolves. And it's very conspicuous. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> what, what biker gang is, is, is inconspicuous? Oh, watch out, we're the, we're the stealthy bikers! I don't know, one trying to rob a place, maybe? Well, yeah. they're just they're doing like a raid. They're just Not coming out, you know, out of the desert. Um, maybe like a score of these werewolves on wheels zooming in. And they start smashing their way through the set. They're just like swinging chains, thrashing claws, roaring. Yes! <laughs> Kevin Diego might like it, but they are tearing apart everything. And Doc Schlock is like, um, especially calling out to you. Uh, Salome, what am I paying you here for? for? Stop them! Stop them. Okay. Well, I guess can I do a wild... I, can I summon a lightning storm? An element Ooh. of nature? Yes, that'd because, be perfect. Okay. So I'm going to use my wild fury, fairy um, powers, and I guess this is, I am unleashing an attack, I suppose. Yes, this so I think for the fairy powers, you have to charge them up. Okay, so... So so on your sheet there, it'll tell you like what it rolls to charge them, right? Um, this is or is that only for the wizard? I think that's what? wizard. Okay, never mind. No, yeah. no, 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 it just simply yeah. has that it's <clears throat> going to be okay. attacking, so... Um, yeah, well I would say, are you using it like as an attack, like to aggressively... Target these bikers and hurt them. I see, yeah, I think so. All right, then it's going to be unleash an attack. Unleash an attack. So the thing is, I'm going to be doing it, and I'm going to be rolling with blood. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have a um, a plus one for blood. Okay, oh, sounds yeah. good. So you take two dice. Yeah, you got yeah. it. Okay. And you're gonna. So I have six, seven. Okay, so seven's not a failure. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mixed success. Seven so and nine is a mixed success. All right. So, so on happen, a seven. So first of all. Yes. You get to you get to pick um, one from the upper list, so you can either inflict terrible harm oh. on the biker gang, mm. or take something <clears throat> from them. It could be like their bikes. <laughs> I can't take their bikes. No, you can. Like really? you're, you, oh, yeah. if your your lightning is coming down, you could like hit the gas tanks or something. Okay, I'll take their bikes away, so that way they're on. They are now on foot. Okay. I suppose so. They're the lightning destroys their bikes. Yes, we'll we'll get to that. So at um, least they're so they're not totally incapacitated, but they're bikeless. Absolutely. They're, and I mean, what good no is longer a, bikers. What they're good is a bikeless no, biker? Huh? I ask you. Right? Huh? What good is a bikeless biker? Right. 
And then the problem is because you rolled a seven, you got to pick one from the bottom list, which is you're either going to take some harm, right? Which is like one of the werewolves will will slash at you with its claws and you'll get hurt, right? Or you're going to be in a bad spot, which is right. like, I will right. say maybe you get lassoed by some chains, toted right. by the okay. president of this motorcycle club. So which yeah. which one would you pick? Pick. I guess I just get hit by their chain. Okay. Okay. So a chain swings by and hits you. You are going to take. One level of faint harm. Okay. So the harm, I believe, is on the... Yes, faint harms. Yes. And you can write down next to it what kind of harm it is, which is... uh, You can say, like, bruised uh, bruised side. Yeah, so it's... As these chains, like, rip into you, yeah. Right, so it's enough that it, it... it keeps me out of the action for a while. Uh, okay. For a bit, but you yes, well, you can, you can I mean you can still keep going. You're not yeah. totally incapacitated. Incapacitated, but it's not on. The... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, right. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Not only ghosts, but we have Faye as well. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> lightning's coming around. down. Some of these bikes have blown up. Right. I didn't know that. It sounds that like a good Faye working here. Good special effects. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, Doc Dog Slogs and you're like, get the cameras rolling. Keep rolling. <laughs> this pirate movie is going to have bikers in it now. <laughs> yes. I don't care if it's historically accurate, Mr. Uh, Ghost. I love it. <laughs> really, Doc? That's pushing it. <laughs> hey, uh, Diego, you know what that means? You gotta help us. There's no longer bikers in this film. Hey. I will help you. <laughs> so long as this guy promises not to advertise it as a historical fiction. <laughs> we have to roll up our sway. <laughs> this is our this historical fiction. fiction picks. Are they make more money? <laughs> what about uh, Barry Lyndon? This one of my favorites. <laughs> a straight nine. If anyone wants to. Help. Is the um, oh, it's only a minus two to get in the way. He's it? like, okay, all right, all right. Here's the deal. You help me. I will market it. Inspired. I will not. I'll, maybe I could like change your name or something. No, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll give you final script approval. <laughs> you get to approve the final script. Whatever changes you make, yeah. you want, we'll put them in. Also, producer credit. <laughs> I'm what going do you to think? change my name. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's an agreement. Hey, whatever you want. Alan Smithy, you, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, so he'll, he'll do it. Very well. Captain Francisco. <laughs> I'll help. <laughs> I actually knew a Captain Francisco. <laughs> Were there any decent good? lad. <laughs> kind of pissed off his crew and they keyholed him. Nice. Uh, pirate justice. Well, uh, I, I still assume you have a biker problem at least, or a werewolf yeah. problem. Mm-hmm. So, Diego, how do you handle these werewolves that are rampaging around? Uh, let's see here. What do I got? What do I got? Link, manifest, won't be heard. I'm just heard right now. So. Is there a particular werewolf among them? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can tell by the patches on their, uh, their vests, or their cuts, I believe is the biker term. Uh, the, the president of this motorcycle club is, uh, Heck Howler. Heck Howler. Oh, wait, let me... Heck. Not Heck. Howler? No, not Heck Howler. Great name, though. Great name. Oh, wait, no, but it is, it is Heck No, Howler. it is Heck Howler. It's a great name. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He is, yeah. Uh, Heck Howler. Heck Howler. Uh, he is descended... Descended of... From the Howler family, mm. yep. that you guys might remember from our 1920s art, when they were just a bunch of moonshine bootleg werewolves out there in the woods. Now they're biker. Now they're biker so werewolves. Great upgrade. Teams. Yeah. Well. So what do you tell? Really, uh, old one survives. Well, it wasn't true. Yeah. The werewolf I was thinking. But well, maybe the, the I think one of the little ones. <laughs> Mr. Howler, stop this at once. I'm an old friend of Madame La Forest. Be great. La Forest. And I'm pretty sure her family has bigger ties to this than yours. Okay, in fact, you can spot Roxy to Forest. Are you letting her hear this too, or was that your goal? Yeah. I'll let Roxy hear it as well. Okay. And you, Roxy! Yeah, she pauses. Shame on you for doing this. <laughs> Though I really like you doing this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but not to the point of hurting people. Leave at once! Hmm. Or face the tide. I'm gonna have you roll a persuade on them. Uh, you can tell Roxy, like, she's not into this. Mm-hmm. She's, she's like, pausing as soon as she hears your voice. It's another nine. Wow. Oh, can I assist boy. on this? Um, yeah, you can add your voice to it. Mm-hmm. What, what, what are you doing to, like, make it, make it clear to them? I'm gonna say, I, obviously I'm still in my Shinigami, my, my Shin form. Um, I'm, I'm gonna step forward and be like, Honestly, 
Between the tide and getting ripped by me, I don't think you really want to deal with this today. And w I'm actually, I'm not going to be rolling, but I'm actually going to pull out my shotgun. That oh, is, wow. That is yeah. silver blessed and high powered. Oh, oh man. my god. Oh, was this silver a box plug in there? <laughs> I mean, that is a good werewolf, uh, werewolf deterrent for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, let's have you roll to assist. And mom, you can do this as well. Whenever, okay, that, that's <laughs> whenever someone. Oh, not not now, but like in the future. Whenever okay. someone needs help, there's an okay. assist move you can okay. use. Staff, wow, nice. So it's gonna be a total seven. So I'll get that up, okay. and I mark wild. Okay, okay. cool. All right. Um, yeah, they are going to. So they hear it. Uh, Roxy's like <clears throat> um, glaring at uh, at Heck, and she's like, "I knew this was a this was a rotten idea, Heck." Robin, a film British. crew for some, yeah, she is British, Ugh. for some some vampire wanker. Let's get out of here. Vampire. Vampire. <laughs> Everyone's like vampire. And President Howler's like, suppose you're right. Besides, we got what we came for. Uh, road wolves, those of you that still got your wheels, roll out. The rest and of you just run. Your <laughs> wolves. The rest of you just your run. Tails <laughs> your tails your legs. <laughs> and with that, the road wolves depart, yes. leaving the set. Yeah. In shambles, but at least intact, and nobody was uh, was killed. Did they steal anything? Well, actually, as you would say that, Doc Schlock runs out, and he's like, Oh, thank Christ you were there. Good job, all you. That lightning, it was inspired. Reminded me of the natural the natural lighting that Stanley Kubrick <laughs> uses on some of his wonderful oh movies. Oh, gosh. Uh, did they steal anything? Oh, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm afraid they did. In fact, I think that was the whole reason they came here. You mm. said that. Captain Diego, my producer, I'm sorry to say, but it's thinking was very important to you. What could they have possibly taken? Well, spyglass. it was your sword. No, he has oh. a spyglass. That's right. I always keep yeah. the spyglass on me. The spyglass is there, but this thing. sword, uh, some some deep sea divers excavated your pirate ship a couple years back. They dug up the they dug up the sword. I bought an auction figure. It'd be a cool little prop, you know. Throw that on the on the poster, like see the exploits of. Uh, the depravity of, of horrible pagan pirate Captain Devil Diego wielding the actual sword from real life. Uh, sword? You didn't actually have people wield that thing, right? Uh, I mean, you know, just for the ancient. Just for the important scenes. This thing is most likely cursed. Cursed, cursed. cursed. yes. What is it? Are, you, are you sure it hey. wasn't given to Diego by Look, Lars this is pictures. Himself? There's always risk, all right? Anyhow, the road wolves have stolen it, so That's I guess horrible. the risk... I feel like it would fall apart if it was used. <laughs> yeah, well, like you said, magic, I guess, kept it intact. So let me learn you here, buddy. Good point. That sword is more important than you know. I myself never used it. I use an axe, don't you know? But that sword was an heirloom from the original captain of the Sanguine Tide, Captain Amelia herself. You stole that sword. Uh, no, look, I bought it at auction. <laughs> you I brought it. You stole it. Ugh. Yeah, grave robbed it. All right, no, well, somebody else grave yes. robbed it. He just bought it. He didn't and now, know it was grave robbing. And now it's been yeah, stolen yeah, again yeah. by these road wolves. So how about you work with my, uh, my employees here and bring it back? You no, can keep no. it if you want afterwards. I will be keeping it. All right. Keeping it a proper burial as it deserved. So he, he's pacing around. He's like, um... All right. Now, from what I hear, sure. yeah, Ooh, good, good burial at sea. Greenhorn, good luck out there. <laughs> Doc Schlock is walking around thinking he's like, all right. So, from what I hear, the road wolves like to hang their hat at Lord Lars's place in Laurel Canyon. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you guys can go there. That place is like a party twenty four seven. Mm -hmm. Find your way in. I mean, Salome, mm -hmm. you already know you're no. on you're on first yes. name basis with uh, with mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. so maybe he'll let you in. See what you can find, um, but it's a little weird. Those uh, those road wolves don't strike me as the, the sword fighting types. So they well, must have uh, they, they must have taken that cutlass for they, somebody else. They said something about a vampire. That's true. Yeah. They did. How, say well, can I put a face to an name? Do I know any vampires active in the scene? Good point. I'll yeah. let you roll, but I, I might make it a little difficult. For don't this. worry, I have a negative yeah. one. So it's all right. All right let's see three. what happens. Well, that's still a seven. Hey. Okay, Still so seven. you know, I'll just say for that, the most prominent vampire, particularly British vampire in L.A., is Clancy Claggett. Mm -hmm. You know the name and that he's a vampire and that he's like a mover and shaker, but that's about it. Could be him, but he's also kind of a wet blanket. He's still alive. You know him? Oh, I know him. He 
is responsible for the death of me and my crew. Mm. Cool. How have you not killed him yet? He's been alive for like 400 years. <laughs> He's had this weird magical protection around him. Every time I tried to squeeze so what you're my saying hands around he has more powerful allies than you ever did. I don't like you very much. <laughs> I don't like you either. You steal the souls from the right from from basically my job. Hey guys, what let's mean I look, steal souls. look guys, let's cool it. Jump in my butt bug, and we'll I'll, and I'll put some cool tunes on my uh, eight track tape <laughs> my player, and we'll <laughs> hit, oh hit. Let's let, let's join the party. Maybe I'll pick up a few friends along the way in sunset. <laughs> <laughs> I look at the car like, in that? She's so tiny. <laughs> oh, and you know it's got lots of fun, like oh, flowers, shit. stencils oh, yeah. all over. I appreciate the office. I think but I'll just float. <laughs> I have news for you. In this car, everyone floats. <laughs> this is my mother, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all right, so. It feels really good. It feels really good. <laughs> So you guys cruise over to Laurel Canyon. Are there any uh, any preparations you guys want to make before yeah, you arrive? Uh, could yeah. I do a combination um, of my move book learning as well as hit the streets? Uh, sure. What's what's the goal here? To get weaponry that I can use against Lord Clackett. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's have you roll that. So let's first do the book learning. Oh yeah, dang, dude, that's eleven. So I oh man, yeah, you know, you know, you you have the you've read the Claggett chapter in the monster uh -huh. book. Um, <laughs> he has the chapter. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He's, pretty, yeah he's pretty famous. Oh, yeah. And uh, you know, the vampire of yeah. who. Uh, it says on a ten plus, I can ask a follow up question, and the and the MC will answer it honestly. Okay. Um. Let's see. Just for the fun of it, what's actually kept him alive? Hmm. Um, I mean, a lot of it is cunning, but I'll say it's also a willingness to be useful hmm. to powerful people or to whoever is, you know, so it's, potentially he's to kiss ass. If he goes, to it, goes into several dragons. I mean, that, that yes, puts yes. it into perspective. That's very true. And then I'm gonna roll for hit the streets. I'm I'm going back to uh, to Alex and uh, tended yeah. bar for another vampire in the previous decade too. Yeah. Our, uh, mm -hmm. our, our max. Mm -hmm. Six and eight. It's a nine. So. Okay, so I'm going to say you actually go to Special Agent Irvin. Mm -hmm. Maybe you slip away and take a cab over to uh, mm -hmm. I have, Department I have of Justice. I have, it says I have a truck, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right, yeah. You just roll over there on your yeah, truck. Got um, a pickup truck. It was either a pickup truck or a truck, a truck or a muscle car, and I don't think my character has enough money yet to have a muscle car. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, so with a, so, with a nine, yeah. it's going to be more costly than anticipated. Okay. And he, he tells you this. Um, you go over to Special Agent Irvin. You know, he is uh, sort, of, sort of resembling some of the characters that, uh, that Marvin played in some previous games, but of course, not a giant spider. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a very serious-looking human of uh, sort of Slavic de uh, descent. Mm -hmm. um, and he's wearing the full, like, FBI suit, got the brill cream on his hair. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's like, you need vampire hunting equipment? Uh, that's right. And where are you going? What will you be doing with this? Going to Laurel Canyon. Seems we got both werewolves and a, who are, seem to be working for this vampire known as, known as Clancy. Uh, Clancy Claggett. Claggett. Yes. The Bureau has a file on him a mile wide. So I've heard. And uh, Laurel Canyon. Well, just mentioning that sends uh, the director into conniptions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. You better be careful at that age. Yeah. Oh, you're telling me. If you give me, uh, I will give you the vampire hunting equipment you desire, but you will need to report back what you find. You'll sure. be an official informant uh, for the for the bureau. Sure. That's fine. All right. Very good. We'll debrief in a little bit. So, what what gear does he give me? Um. What, 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 what do you think would be a good like vamp, like a crossbow? I'll kind of let you decide here. What do you think would be appropriate? Um, crossbow is a classic vampire. That's true. Yeah. Weapon, or, uh, yeah. Um, I'd like say it. a few stakes and a and a, and a crossbow. Okay. Yeah. He'll, he'll supply those. What about a a, a good pizza from you know Numero Uno with a lot of garlic? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that too. That would also work really well against vampires. He's Why did like, we think about in the previous arcs, guys? <laughs> I know. Just, just pizza. Stuffed him full of garlic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, I will say you guys arrive I mean, in Laurel Canyon. You never know. I, I could have added some <laughs> some garlic to the steak. Oh, so. or a swing by <laughs> the pizza gar- place on the way there. Yeah, just near them. Just cover the steaks in garlic oil. Just take just take like a three hour to detour up to Gilroy and grab some garlic from there and then drive all the way back down. Yeah. So I'm gonna do a quick sort of a bolts in holy water. I'm gonna do an overview of of Lord Mars's. His his little uh, his his home here, and then we'll kind of cut in with you guys just arriving at the door. So, Lord Lars owns a groovy pad, an exclusive Laurel Canyon cul-de-sac. The rambling ranch-style New Age palace is home to a party that never seems to end, where the sitars never stop strumming, and there's always a new joint ready to be rolled. <laughs> Presid- <laughs> this is my mom, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Presiding over the ceremonies, <laughs> Lord Lars himself. <laughs> Handsome as Peter Fonda, an easy rider, crazy as Ken Kesey, and with an air of mystery matching Bowie, there's no doubt there's something inhuman about the gracious host. In the study, expatriate vampire Clancy Claggett is making deals, playing at being a blood-sucking version of Beatles manager Brian Epstein by bringing money and magic together. Out back, Charlie Manson and his family are working through an impromptu jam session. While erstwhile yokai Johnny Kappa raids the kitchen for vegetables. Uh, Johnny. Yeah, Johnny Kappa, great, great returning character. Good old Johnny Kappa. I'm glad I didn't kill him. He needs those cucumbers. Yeah, he's got to live now. I know. Yeah. It's a happening sort of place. But why would we kill Johnny? I mean, all he wants is cucumbers. It's true. It's true. I, okay, I was cut him on accident in the first episode. That was my bad. Just like, get him, like, I'm going to kill this guy. Yeah, he did shoot him, but he, you know, he got better. He got better, yeah. So you pull up at the door. That's the Wraith has to, actually has to keep him alive. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the music and the jams and everything. And uh, as you knock on the door, Lord Lars opens. He's wearing just like a bathrobe and probably like that's it. <laughs> Very good luck looking, uh, dark hair and, and clearly, you know, that air of mystery, that that, uh, that eldritch fairy feeling is heavy about him. Yeah. He's just like kind of leaning in the doorway, very cool, being like, what's happening? Okay, well, I think, since I say I brought some friends to party with, for and even some pizza too. <laughs> so. Hey man, there's always room for pie Bar. in my pad. <laughs> uh, but let me tell you, you're always welcome here. But these two, mm. this guy looks like he belongs in Squaresville, USA. And this guy, just looking at him, harshes my vibes. Uh, and you don't want to harsh my vibes. Uh, can I? I, we, I, I, I pull, sort of like, you gave this to me. I know, exactly. A, yeah. a, a harsh vibe machine. Yeah. I'm going to, can I cast an illusion? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, he's a powerful fairy. So let's, let's go for it. Well, let's try it, because I'm going to turn them into into hippies. <laughs> <laughs> or, well, or like... Maybe like Sunny and Cher or something. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so the question is, question is which one's which? <laughs> no, whatever, you know, they're gonna, it's, they're, go, they're, they're gonna think they're, um, I'll be Cher. Sure. <laughs> whatever, right. you know, or. Oh, that means I'm the short so, one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So they're going to be, um. I'm totally good looking one, sorry. Okay, okay. So anyway, I'm gonna be casting, it's right. gonna be a glamour, and so okay. I guess it's gonna be a. Um, I think it just happens. Yeah. But doesn't it have to I, 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 no, I think, roll? I think you just happens. Happens. Hmm? Yeah, whenever you use a fairy power, choose one. Yeah, it's his glamour. I'm going to use glamour. Yeah. So, so you don't need to roll for it. it I don't happens. have to roll. Oh. Okay, but you need more corruption for it? But you do mm-hmm. need to you need choose, choose one. one. It's either you oh. take harm oh. or you take corruption. Okay, oh, I'm going to be, become yeah. a little corrupted because... Okay. okay. That's the trade off of fairy yeah. magic. Right. Like, you don't need to roll for it, but you have to take but a bad always a price. Yeah, oh, yeah. I like yeah. it. Oh, I did not know. All right. So you, you make the illusion, and Lord Lars is like, um, no, I'm right here. I can see that they just transform in front of me. Friends. Like, what? Yeah. But however... The Lord Lars isn't for you, it's for everybody else. So oh, you know what? I get it. And hey, excellent. I appreciate this this cool illusion has seriously mellowed my vibe. <laughs> so, Sonny and Cher are always welcome. Come on in. 
I'll well, use this sudden appearance of yeah. truth to float into the mansion. Yeah, I would say you don't need to do this because you know you're you're an invisible ghost. Yeah. yeah. So I'll just however, be like, are you from the same arc as Lord Lars too? Yes. Yeah. In fact, you yeah yes, him? you are. In fact, yeah. I'm going to say Lord Lars. Well, no, the other guests won't recognize you. Hey, they probably don't even know what planet they're on at this point. <laughs> uh, but Lord Lars is definitely he's a super powerful like fairy lord, so he's going to notice you, and he recognizes you, of course, because you were you were together in Salem back in 1692. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's just so he gives you like kind of a sideways glance and he's like, Captain Diego, is that you? I I be him. Hello, Lars. Been a long time since I've seen you uh, like the popping in. Remember, used to come by uh, you were us, us in the store fighting that weird monster made of all the pieces of my inventory and then flying in your ship together. Ah, good times. Scarecrows. Scarecrows. <laughs> Lord Lars. Hey, I've been around, brother. Around for a long time. Sixty something. Oh, you did Uh, you know, I was away in Fairyland for a while. But I decided to come back. It's my kind of scene once more. Excellent. But I'm not really here to familiarize myself with you know old friends. I'm here for a job. Would you happen to know if Quincy is around? I've got some cold iron on me. He thinks for a moment. He's like, "All right, you're a friend, so I'll tell you." Clag gets over there in the study. He's uh, he's chatting it up with uh, one of those werewolves from the Road Wolves. Clag gets just finished. They were all doing some business out back with uh, with uh, old Charlie Manson. And, uh, that guy, something about him, seriously harsh is my vibe. But anyhow, so I'll tell you where Clag is. But here's the deal: this is my house. You can help it. Don't start a fight and don't of kill course. anybody here. We never think so. Or destroy. A vampire here. This is a sacred place. Shit. We got it. You it's got that right. Alright, alright. It's, right. it's a place right. of peace. Right. I want to Come on, Sonny, let's go. God damn it. <laughs> alright. So you guys are heading to uh, Claggett and you're heading to the study? Mm hmm. Alright, so in there you find Clancy Claggett and uh, President Heck Haller, as well as Roxy. Yeah. Quincy Claggett. Oh, yes, of course. Clancy Claggett, long dead. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lord Quincy. Did I write Clancy on the list? No, you said Quincy. Quincy. It is Quincy. Yes, oh, okay. so Quincy's Quincy. the one. Quincy. 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 I know. So it's easier to say than Quincy. Quincy and Clancy. I'm really also, good at naming characters, you guys. <laughs> all, I'm, I'm sorry to say, Clancy is a much higher caliber version of the, oh. the, 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 the Claggett family because <laughs> I, honestly, he was so much fun to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Quincy was like the ne'er do well, like bad, lame nephew oh, that yeah. I invented just so we could die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I needed to save Clancy. Yeah. I mean, save Quincy. Yes. <laughs> Quincy is chatting with President Heck Howler and Sergeant of Arms, Roxy DeForest. And they're just like finishing up the business. He's like handing over some, you know, suitcases full of money. Mm. Um, Claggett's got like the butterfly collar, very, very pale chest hair. With you know a gold chain onto it, he's you know he's living in uh, the it's all polyester of course. He's trying to get into the style of the times. Um, are you just like bursting in, or are you? Um... Should we knock? I'm gonna manifest two, not mark the direction. I want to be heard, and I want to touch and be touched by the physical world. Okay. Right. So he cannot see me, and I'll just whisper around him. Quincy. I guess I'll knock. His eyes widen, and he is like, The good captain. Quincy. I'll be just a moment. He opens the door. I'll just oh. kick the door. All right, the door no, smashes. No, 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 no. If he's open the door, I'm not going to kick the door, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> just a just moment. I'm like, okay, not that now and this. Yeah. But if he's open the door, he did that. I had a line. That would have real funny. You should have yeah. But he's like, like, what's the point of knocking? <laughs> <laughs> it's a courtesy. As you guys come in, he's like, I take it you're in league with our ghostly seafaring friend. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. You're just here to mm. do something. I'm going to put this one with a friend. <laughs> so, well, in that case, uh, I would suggest pissing off then. This is a private room. We're trying to do some private business. Yeah, well, unfortunately, your private business made it up. Uh, our business, unfortunately. Also not very gentlemanly of you to say to tell us to piss off. Yes. yes. Well, I am not a gentleman. Yeah, that's oh. right. You're a pissant vampire from England who couldn't hack it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to be I mean, rude was... about things. Oh, how the far do you fall, Quincy? Uh, oh, yeah. Shut up! 
It wasn't yeah. really Fall Out Perch, what I was read, it? It wasn't really Far Out Fall. Out fall. No, Look, it was. All, we, all we want is the sword back, and we'll be on our way. No harm, no foul. We're not here to kill you, Quincy. We, we don't want to deal with you, with you, Claggett. We yeah. just want the sword back and get on our way and make this stupid film. Question. Is this... A, you said he's in the study, correct? Yes, so it's him now, and are the there two a of the Roadwolves. Are there a lot of books in the study? Yeah. Are the books lining the walls? Yes. Okay. Well, you know what it's like when you have books lining a wall in L.A. and an earthquake hits. <laughs> <laughs> As being an LA person and knowing what it's like to have bookshelves full of, <laughs> of you know, because we can't kill him, we're not supposed to kill him. But Although maybe, be open to do it. but you know, <laughs> these earthquakes can cause you know bookshelves falling down. So I'm going to see if I can cause a little earthquake here right. in this very shaky house. In, in Long Canyon. Canyon. Right. It's pretty close to a fault line, I'm pretty sure. Absolutely. Well, as close to is going to appreciate a stretch. <laughs> All right, let's calls. roll a let it out. Okay, so I'm going to do... It's not our fault, it's A let it out. <laughs> it's a yeah, yeah, earthquake proof your house, please. Spirit, spirit. spirit. is going to be rolling with spirit time. It's a plus two for me. Nice. Shit. Oh, plus no. two, so, plus two, so, so, it's six. Six. so it's a six. six. Can, oh, maybe somebody know. could help by like pushing a bookshelf. Six. I'll help you. Yeah, because I can oh, tell this would actually be really Yeah, telekinesis. Yeah. Yeah. That would actually make sense. Yes. I literally have telekinesis. Yeah. Yes. yes. All right, so yeah. he's going to assist you on this. Yes. So plus wild. Four, five, six. Damn. Not Ooh. enough. Not uh, enough. Uh, all right. So you try and manifest, but maybe you know the fault line just isn't feeling it today. Yeah. The magic isn't coming through. Mm. The bookshelves shake a little bit, but it's not that much. Not uh, enough for them to pe to people who want to go under the door. Quick, go under the doors. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody's doing that. Um, they even, or is it, they even around this time? The whole get in the door, in the door frames. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what L.A. is. I was, That's my mom. <laughs> I was there, okay. and yes, I experienced many earthquakes, <laughs> and I always went under the door. Well, then the question is, did they teach it to people? Yes. Okay. Oh, you never yes. know in the 60s. <laughs> it's yes. a weird time. Yes. <laughs> a weird time. I wrote I mean, out those grew, earthquakes. They had, they had us go under the desk when, when I was in school. Yeah. 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 Yes. I'm sure a great shakeout is like a few, few days ago. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. was at a training that day. The so, uh, did work. Oh, All well. right, so Good try. Claggett is actually, he's going behind Howler and Roxy, who was looking pissed off at him. Um, and he's like, um, we have an arrangement, and these people are accosting me. Do what I'm paying you for. Take care of them. Look, we don't want to fight. Especially since we told Lars that we wouldn't. And none of us want to mess with Lars. We just want the item back. That's, That's all. all we care about. We could yeah. care less about you stealing anything else. The sword is important. We need it back. Roxy's like... Is it back? Roxy's looking at Howler. Um, and she's like, told you this would happen. Mm -hmm. uh, someone's going to need to roll a persuasion on... Uh, Ooh. Um, let's roll that. I rolled good on persuasion, but I have zero in heart. So I, have, I, I have plus one in heart. It might oh, be plus. better to have you do it. All right. You might have the highest in heart. Okay, that's an eight. There you go. That is a mixed success. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. Um, they modify the terms. All right. How, so President Howler will answer. He's like, all right. We did, we did the deal with Claggett, and I'll tell you what happened with the sword. Uh, deal is... It was a bit of a payday, and the club needs it. Of course, I understand that. So we're not here to ruin that. Yeah. So, well, I mean, you you sort of are because you're going to take the sword. Yeah. Well, I'm, that's yeah. Unfortunately, I've and our employer, the one who's fi the final buyer, is going to be real pissed off. You got to well, make we're not sure. We're asking you for this. We're asking him. But I, I appreciate. It. Continue, yeah. Continue, please. You just got to make sure that no blowback comes to the club. Of course not. You guys were not involved. You guys. We're unfortunate bystanders in the situation while Claggett made a move that he shouldn't have made. All right. Now, Claggett, you paid them for delivery. Let them go. Let's us have this conversation. Let's sit down like gentlemen. <laughs> Claggett's like, well, Talk this out. I'm afraid yours, the saying goes, shit out of luck. <laughs> Ooh. I already made the trade. I was simply the middleman. In fact, one of 
two middlemen. The other middleman, or middlemanson, <laughs> oh, is outside Christ. there playing one of his excruciating songs you know, over there in the backyard with his groupies. This is completely, this is completely in character. He's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, lad. It's Though in real life, have you guys actually listen to Vance's music? Yeah, it's very weird and extremely <laughs> creepy. <laughs> I know, right? It's just like, what am I listening to? Terrifying. Yeah. Uh, the Beach Boys made it good, at least. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah. I was saying that Manson either has it or knows who has it. That's right. Cool. Then I guess our, our, our here is done. I apologize for interrupting this business meeting. Can I get thank you? I apologize for nothing. <laughs> no, where you are now, Quincy. Oh. That's unfortunate. I'm yeah, he's that. like he's definitely rubbing his temples and upset. I heard uh, England's nice this time of year. Oh, the old. Well, they do want to kill me there, but then maybe that's not a great idea. Never mind. <laughs> yes. Canada's Who nice. knows? Canada's oh, nice. I can always Canada's make a deal. So, uh, Roxanne and uh, Heck, I apologize. We apologize. Roxy's like. I like your style. Mm. Enjoy your payday. Mm. So, outside in the backyard, you find this impromptu jam session of, I don't know, cease to exist or whatever. He was, he was busting out, it's been stopped. And Mance is now getting into an argument with Wanda Wraith, a young uh, magic using... Could I put a face to a name? Uh, yes. Consult with book with Wanda? Yeah. Well, no, I, I don't think this will be book learning quite yet. Nope. <laughs> Alright, y'all haven't met her before. I mean, she's, she's pretty new to the scene. Um, but yeah, she's... She's got, like, um... I think she's technically wild. Yeah, I think she's technically Yeah. Because she's, like, a, you know, hanger on yeah. Lord Larson's place. So I would yeah. know I would know her. Yeah, yeah and yeah. you can always do put a face against, yes. like, that That decides, like, how well you know her, if you yeah. want to roll well, that. Yeah, well, since she, she was hanging out there and I'd be hanging, obviously. So I'd basically I'd... look at her and be like, wait, who is she? Yes. You can, so if you want to roll a put a face in it, you roll plus wild. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that could be a good one. And you'll probably roll high because you have a high score in that one. What, in what? In, in wild. 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 Just well, one. just a plus one. Well, that's okay. something. It's better oh, than that's nice. good. Nice. I got a oh. nine. Nice. But and it's plus, is well, it nine eight total? Plus the eight. Eight plus one. Eight plus, okay, yeah. nine. All right. Nine. So you probably haven't met face to face. You've seen it around, like all right. the various B ins and. Yes. Rituals that he uh, that he yes. that he goes in. Yeah. Maybe you were behind her on like the morning yoga session that he was throwing. That he was doing. Yeah. Um. So yeah, she is like a tall, witchy woman. You know, long, long, dark hair. Um. <laughs> yep. And right now, uh, her and Charlie Manson are just getting into it in an argument. Oh, it's so. And she's like, um, "This is all wrong. These people are like your slaves, worshiping you. That's that's." Unacceptable what you have going on there. And Manson's like, hey man, you don't understand. I'm just like the gardener. I just take care of them. I just be this, I'm the sunlight under which they grow. You can just go, you're too far away to understand it, man. So, what do you guys do? Someone else want to deal with this guy. Manson, of course, very short, big beard, very creepy. Yeah, he's very tiny. He's a short man. You can't <laughs> kill anybody here. Yeah, I know. That's why I was asking what else they bleed on this one, because I but just don't like it. On the that. other hand, we can't kill anyone. But that doesn't mean anyone else can kill anyone. Okay. I okay, I don't know where you're going with this. I don't know if I like it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, since I've never used a second corruption move before, can uh -oh. I just switch this out for possession? <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, it's all good, because you're like, you know, it's a new, right. new one-shot, so yeah, you can possess somebody. All right. So... I'm going to mark corruption to enter the mind of a weak-minded person, your goal, in my presence, and control their movements and speech for a time. Okay, it could be Juan. I mean, Juan is pretty strong-minded. Mm -hmm. It could be Johnny Kappa. He's just coming out of the kitchen. <laughs> Big old tray of cucumbers. <laughs> you don't want to hurt John. Give him the chair! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hurt Johnny, but I do want Johnny to hurt somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do, you, what do you need to roll to possess, or does it just happen? I just more corruption. Okay. So, what, is, what does it look like when your spirit, like, takes over his body? All right. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, I'm going to go into them, and there's going to be a little tiny crab crawling around on them. Whoa. Oh, God. 
Mm. Crab rave. Yeah. Oh, it could be just like this song. little tiny crab controlling him by his hair or something. <laughs> it's just a, it's, it's a crustacean ratatouille. Yep. Yep. And we have a precedent for ratatouille type stuff in this. Oh yeah. We do, we do, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we do. It's weird. Uh, this is the second ratatouille reference we've had. No, mm -hmm. what you're saying is that our first ratatouille reference inspired the movie itself later oh, on. Oh yeah, so ratatouille's like reference to years. us. Yes. yes. Oh, oh wait, no. Right. That makes sense because she's was... now. <laughs> no, Red 2 was Dreamworks, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so. Well, so. No, 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 you, you, you definitely can't tell him. Tip him over, please. But he has, yeah, you know, green, green, scaly skin, big old claws. And it starts to fade a little bit after he, after he, you are possessed. Um, he, and you just like, you know, yeah. drop the cucumbers. They dramatically <laughs> no, fall to the ground. I'm not gonna drop the cucumbers. That's for Johnny. I'm gonna set them down real nice. We can come back for them later. Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they fell on the ground, I'm sure he'd still eat them. Yeah. Gently sets down the cucumbers, and then yes. what do you do? Manson. We can't kill him, and I don't want to get Johnny into trouble, but we can pin him down. So I'm going to walk Johnny over to Madsen and just say to him, in my voice, Captain Diego's voice, where did you take the sword, Manson? He spins around, looks at it, and he's like, whoa, look, I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. You the sword, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Manson. <laughs> I'm going to have Johnny grab him by his throat. <laughs> Ooh. If I can. All right, you're gonna have to either do a let it out to frighten and intimidate, or a persuade. I'll kind of let you choose. Let it out for me. All right, much better. Three, six, eleven. Nice. Nice. Whoa. So don't mark. I can mean either not mark corruption or take another from the list. I don't know. I'll take. I'll mark corruption and take another from the list. Take definitive hold of something. Vulnerable or exposed. All right. So the information I want from him, Ooh. since I figure he's already fried. Oh, absolutely. All right. So you get him in the claw. You're like holding him up off the ground. <clears throat> Not too hard. He's a little guy. <clears throat> um, he's like, oh, man, I'll, I'll tell you everything, man. Let go. No, you're gonna say it right here and now. Um, you can I still pass say it through your lungs. <laughs> you heard talking. Whoa. It's the children, man. It's that, that, the, the, the big guy, Gaskins. Gaskins? Gaskins. Yeah. Can't. I sent, I sent Squeaky over to deliver it. Squeaky. Squeaky, Squeaky from, from, of course. Yeah. <sighs> she's already, she's already on her way. Squeaky. Probably already made the delivery. It's at, uh, that, that abandoned, uh, amusement park place on the pier. He docks his ship there. He can't go into U.S. waters, you know, tax reasons and whatnot. He's out there sailing the seas, man. He just comes over to the port, picks up the magical stuff, goes back out on the ocean. That's all I know, I swear. When's the pickup? It's going to be tonight. The ship's uh, probably already there. It might already be, uh, be setting off. Uh-oh. What do you lot say? Is he telling the truth? Mm. It's worth checking out. Yeah. I don't think he'd lie to us, not in this situation. Mm -hmm. Can I figure... That someone out oh. that yeah, yeah. do that? Uh, yeah. Have yeah. A good choice. Okay. But I have, but I, mine, but my mind is zero. Out of the mind, which is negative one. Been, negative it's, one. Huh? What? It's been destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, that's fair. So, set seven. I say it's still that's good. Still it's still seven. still good. You can seven. ask one question. Okay. For the one question is, um, I guess the, the question is really, um, let me think, I... Well, I know that with the pier, the Pacific Ocean, the pier, what time does he leave Pacific, what time does the boat leave the Pacific Ocean Park? Um, well, it's actually got to be a question from the, the list there where it's yeah. just figures oh, someone oh, out. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm that's, sorry. that's a good question. He'll, he'll, oh. tell you, he'll tell you the details of that. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks to Marvin, or thanks to Captain Diego's uh, okay. earlier well, in the role. Okay. What, what, does, what was your character going to get from that, um, this, this deal? Yeah, that, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Um... You realize that like he's part of the children, but like mm -hmm. sort of a yeah. an outsider. Mm -hmm. And through this deal, he's hoping to ingratiate himself with Gaskins, who is the head of the children. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, and also, actually, with that role, 
mm-hmm. he's going to ask a question about you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, it's kind of like you're sort of seeing through each other. Right. Okay. So I'll ask you, like, what is what is what is Salome afraid of? Like, what really worries her? What, 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 what really worries me? Yeah. That people will find out my relationship with with the. Um, FBI, that I'm secret. No, oh, okay. okay. I don't say this makes sense because Manson's what? good at getting under people's skin. And like yeah, that. that I'm that that I've been also an informer. I guess that's yeah. That would be. So he yes. actually kind of makes eye contact with you. Yeah. And he's like, um, yeah. I see everything. Yeah. That's the kind of trip I'm on. Yeah. And I know everything. Yeah. That means I know who you've been talking to. Yeah. You think I don't got? Contacts up there in the agencies and the law, the, s- the square world, the straight world, I know it all. Yeah. And you guys, especially you, Mr. Kappa holding, threatening to choke me here. <laughs> but you two, you ought to know that your friend here might be doing a little bit of talking with some feds, if you know what I mean. I mean I'm sorry, you mistake me for someone who actually gives a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you go over there and you be careful, little fairy, because over there on the pier, you might run to some of those federal friends yourself. Yeah. Great. Right. Okay. All right. The feds have been really good to me, so... (laughs) Yeah, you're okay. We probably don't care that much. But, um, yeah, now you know there might be some federal involvement, Uh some F-bup involvement going on. F-bup. F-f-f'd up. (laughs) Uh, Going on at the, uh, at the pier. Right. So... Right. And yeah, this is, I think, did I did I write it down in the, that it's the Pacific Ocean Park? In, no, but uh, what other dessert amusement park could it be? Oh, you're so, <laughs> wow, thank you, you Mom. Did, did, yes, it, I knew when I was playing this out, I was like, I gotta do an abandoned amusement park. It's gotta be Pacific Ocean Park. And I was like, I wonder if my mom's gonna recognize it. But you like figure it out even before I said it. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I've been there. Incredible. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was hoping we'd get some. So very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really good. And this is also, I gotta give a quick shout out to, uh, yeah. to, to Jim when he when yes. we did our, our Cthulhu. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. With, um, yeah. This, this is actually the second time to tabletop <laughs> right. visit to Pacific Ocean Park. It yeah. deals a, with the supernatural too. I know. Yeah. We had kind of a, an action showdown in, mm-hmm. you know, the ruins of this a lot of amusement fun. park. Yeah, well, I gotta say, like a real, real world, scary locations. You it can't really is. an abandoned amusement park uh, that's real, and they actually found a real corpse there. Yeah. No, that was the, no. Nope, oh, that nope. was another one. Long no? Beach Pike. In oh there, wow. I was, and I went on that. Now the question ride. was, and it, I went on that ride. No, was it? A, was Whoa. it? Was it a gunslinger that had been embalmed yes. for like? Yeah, the yes. gunslinger whose body kept them like being yes. shunted around and paid yes. for people. Mm-hmm. Yes, that yeah. was. Yes, that was at the Long Beach Pike. That place. Okay. Had, Drunken singers and tattoo <laughs> artists, <laughs> which is <That's> another, <laughs> but, incredible. But that wasn't abandoned at that time. It was full of drunken sailors. The abandoned one. That's Long Beach, so I mean. <laughs> ah, well, I ought yes. to put that in Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's some of that in Galaxy's Edge? <laughs> More like Galaxy's Edge Lord. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you learned from Anson. Oh, he should have said the the, the yacht that. Yes. Gaskin's ride, and it's called the Andromeda. And it's going to be at, it is currently docked at Pacific Ocean Park, set to leave pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, are you guys doing anything before you get there? If you could if you possibly do. put a face to a name for Gaskin, see if yes, I've, learned, that'd be good. I've learned anything from my book learning. <laughs> okay. Five, six, seven, eight. That's straight eight. Okay. Um, is that just for put a face to a name, or is that a different That's, thing for. Yeah, put a face to a name. Okay, um, yeah, so you never met him. Nope. But you definitely heard about him. You probably heard about his shenanigans of the Celestial Society. Celestial society. Oh. Um, but you know he's in charge of a. He was apparently like contacted by some, the go another ghost perhaps of a long dead British occultist who gave him secrets of arcane knowledge that he then parlayed into <clears throat> being in charge of this international uh, organization of. Um, Wizards and sorcerers, new age occultists who come together, oh, geez. and uh, for you know tax reasons, Seriously, his it? his organization of the sea. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm really hoping another certain one is. Uh, yes. This is you know legally distinct, I will say, but it's it is sort of a reference to uh, to a certain uh, leader of a recent religion that I'll religion that I might mention here. 
Right, that put snakes in mailboxes. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> is Elizabeth the one with their own navy? Yes, and this is kind of that navy. Oh, God. Yeah, so, he, so he's out there in the, in the Andromeda, sort of ruling his empire that way. Uh, can I... Uh, can I hit the streets with a, um, a local kind of private detective, um, a, a private detective named Booker? Oh, <laughs> she's still around in ten? Okay. Mm-hmm. It's, only, it's only, what, ten years? Yeah, I'm still <laughs> hitting the streets, maybe a little yeah. a little uh, worse for wear, but still still going strong. S- seeing what she knows about uh, this pew that we're trying to go figure out, see if there's anything that uh, she might know that might give us an edge sure. on the situation. Uh, and that's an eight. Mm, okay. Um, she'll eat you a little bit. Okay. She'll be like, that place, bad news. From what I hear, G-Men, or some agency or something, has had it staked out. Nothing to know about what was staken out, or just, uh... That's all I hear, G-Men friend. stuff being G-Man stuff? Yeah. Right, Feds you, always play it close to the vest. Of course. Thanks, Booker. All right, very cool. And um, so with that, so we'll, we'll cut ahead to your arrival at Pacific Ocean Park. We'll see you get there kind of in the early evening as uh, this is when it starts getting really creepy. There's people who are looking for power, finding ghosts of, of and making deals. Ghosts because deals. ghosts and outer entities are generally pretty damn powerful. Vampires, oh. werewolves, they're small fry compared to the things that exist. Why, well, that's quite flattering, ladies. Thank you. There's a reason. Yeah. Why. Well, that very reason is why my family's been trying to kill off you people. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Wow. It's kind What's of the first... What's done to you, lad? Talking about ghosts or monsters in general? Oh, hey, chill out. Chill Mostly out, vamps. man. Mostly peace. Vamps are peace. 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 Peace and love. Chill out. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Salome. <laughs> so, the Pacific Ocean Park has seen better days. The former bustling amusement park is a wreck. The space-age nautical decorations given way to rust and ruin. The nighttime waves crash against the decaying pier, and gulls gather on the skeleton of the Ferris wheel and roller coasters. Docked at the end, the Andromeda is a floating wedding cake, the sailing palace of Grover, Gosford, and Gaskins. He stands on the foredeck wearing a custom-made velvet captain's outfit and matching hat <laughs> and ascot. The Andromeda has become the floating home of the children, informal international society of occultists, and G.G. Gaskins is their erstwhile emperor. Now he gathers more and more power, readying for some distant apotheosis. Apotheosis, sorry. <laughs> Mispronouncing the own big words I picked. <laughs> apotheosis. Apotheosis. It means uh, godhood, yeah, becoming a god. Okay, so. Um, that kind of little bit of overview. Are yes. you guys just like charging right in, or are you scape scoping the area out, approaching? What's the plan here? Are there any cars around? Um, maybe you could roll investigate a place of power uh, with mortality and kind of like Ooh. see what you can spot there. Mortality. Let's see how it goes. Nope, that's a three. So who here owes is owed a debt by me? Not to me. Owed a debt no. by you? Yeah. Or, like, I owe you a debt for whatever reason, such as messing up a job or... Yeah. If one of you guys can get on there, you can invoke me and I will appear there. Mm-hmm. No matter where I'm at, I am pulled to you. Okay. All right. I don't like giving that information out because obviously that's... Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously they can use it Yeah, a little mm-hmm. powerful, a little kind of... Okay, you can well, be a real asshole me. with it. But, you owe so. me some for, for failed protections. So. Yep. I need to oh, no, 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 no. Like this is like, if you're in a situation oh. and you need me there, or if you guys sneak oh. on the boat and I'm not there, well, you can call I guess, me to you. Uh, I guess. Right. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah, I okay. Yeah. How do I, what do I do? Do I need to? That's, no, no, but that's, 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 you, yeah. you would just okay. say, yeah, yeah, just in the future, just in say that you not like right yeah. Right now, I, yeah. is there a possibility that I can create an illusion that we're security guards? Oh, I like Ooh. it. Yeah, right. because right, that way it. people would, they won't notice us. Because obviously, even a place like that is going to have some security guards hanging out. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. keep, keep okay. the derelicts away. Okay, so, so you don't you don't need to roll for that one again. Just mark. I'm marking damage. Get or yeah. Get okay, or I guess I'll, get I corruption. have corruption, so I'm going to mark corruption, and I'm going to become a. So all of a sudden, we look like you're 
you know, your rent. Average, you know, Joe Blow's stupid security, you know, rent a car. Wow, this is what my mom thinks of security guards. The thin <laughs> blue, the thin green line. <laughs> All right. No, honestly, thanks. It's not a bad look. <laughs> Not my preferred look, but all right. Mm -hmm. work. It, it has no effect on me whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're so <laughs> visible. Yeah, okay. No one can see if they choose to not. If you choose not to look right. and see. No, okay. Okay. You haven't even said anything. So then we even, can sort no of, you know, there. pretend we're on with our walkie-talkies and kind of, sort of, you know, kind of marching. Oh, things are okay here. What do you see here, John? <laughs> oh, everything looks okay here. Oh, mom, can you always be a security guard? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Just like constant you. checking in with John, who's just like, you need to do it like every 15, 30 minutes even. Like, not every second. <laughs> so, John's just exasperated. <laughs> Salome, Shin, and James, as security guards, you're all like walking through the park. Mm -hmm. Are you going to the Andromeda? What's, what's sort of the plan here? Mm -hmm. I guess we'll kind of make a, a, a lazy loop towards it. Yeah. yeah. So, looks like we're just on patrol and not beelining right, there. Right, so they don't think, so we don't want to be obvious. Yeah. Okay. I, on the other hand, will be honest. <laughs> yeah, but... I'm going to make a beeline straight for the Andromeda. All right. right. Yeah, yeah, he totally doesn't notice before you three you, Before being you guards. leave, I do want to say, um, ask me something. Ask me, get, put me in your debt. Okay, I can free you from the powers of hell. If you serve aboard the tide for a hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> no go. I'm sorry. Oh, um, what's a hundred years to a ghost? Come what's on. a hundred years to a ghost? Uh, suddenly, almost like without even attempting it, the, the sort of uh, the Shinigami as essence comes up and just says, no deal. <laughs> well, that's his And then his suddenly Shin's back and just like, I am Shin, Shin is me. That's a, that's a package to that. I'm sorry. You really need to see somebody about that. <laughs> Going through life being possessed by the powers of hell is no way to live. Yeah, I've, I've told him that so many times it's not even funny. Yeah. Listen to your friend. You I, made, I made a deal that I wanted to do something with my life, and this was the deal that I made. What a life. I get to kill things. I get to go hunt down souls that have gone, gone wayward. Dude, you could have done that with working with me. Yeah, it's a point. I could have bitch and saw it, though. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the weapons I'm carrying? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I left all of those behind for a reason. No, there's a reason why I carry this this rod, and, and I'm going to. What's going to happen is, is it's usually a rod like this, but I'm going to hit a button, and it's going to extend into a full staff. <laughs> oh, pretty cool. Switch. And it's it's cold iron, so I'm keeping Collapse it away from her. Full staff. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's cold iron. It also has two blades on each end. Whoa. All right. Looks like you guys are getting ready for war here. Yeah. Um, Diego, you want to make a beeline straight for the ship? Yeah, but if you want, no depths, but I can bring someone with me, mm -hmm. if you want. Someone go with them? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll give this a shot, why not? Alright, grab my claw. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Very uncomfortable. <laughs> he is like a big old crab claw kind of thing. Claw, yeah, it's just Bad manifest claw. right now. Yeah, it's ghost the pirate. Big one. No, not a hook? Okay. Uh, he's he's close. Also part tainted. So I'll he gets... use wool, what wool? Mm -hmm. To escape and choose an additional option to bring someone with me. So I'll go through the walls of the uh, drone then. Mm -hmm. Okay, pop out on the deck there. That is an 11. Dang! So in a scheduled situation, I just choose one. I will bring someone with me. <laughs> Come along, mate. Okay, you guys appear right there. Gaskin spins around. His crew is like in the process of, of, of uh, shoving off. <laughs> yeah, probably not the best way to travel, but it was fast. So he spins around and sees you. Uh, at least see you. Are you appearing? No. Okay, so he just sees you. I forgot to mention the slide, but it doesn't render you invisible. <laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, don't worry, I'm right around. Gaskin's yeah, just like fingering his, his kind of thick chin. Well, that's interesting. His chin. Young man, who are. Oh, I suddenly. So oh! <laughs> there's two of them now! <laughs> Good golly. Does that erase it? What are you doing no, here? It does not, oh, <laughs> does not erase a death. That is just. Um, don't you know you're no, no, that, 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 that is cashing in a death. That is cashing yeah. in a death. Cash in a death, which also marks off why. Don't have uh, it. I do. The only one Don't you know you should ask a captain's permission before you come aboard? I'm sorry. Oh, um, is that what it is, Lenny? We did it. We did. We did ask the captain's permission. Just maybe not the captain of this particular ship. Ooh. I'm going to uh, assume the uh, devil inside. 
And I wanted to assume my, de- my demon form. Great. Mm-hmm. You roll yours for us? And I uh, that's a seven. It's only one. Huh? Um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll get, I'll do inflict plus one harm. So I'm now doing dealing four harm if we get into the fight. Mm. All right. In fact, at this point, he is realizing that a fight is what's going to happen. So he is going to, um, his eyes like darken, and he has kind of a little sea chest there, you know, on the on the quarter deck where you guys are. Uh, and he pulls it open, and the cutlass is is in there. Ooh. Green brother! <laughs> and he's like, a disembodied voice. Let me just say this. I need this much more than you. There are powers out there you cannot comprehend. And this might give me a chance of controlling them. <laughs> he grabs that sword, and then suddenly the sea outside starts to ripple, and a giant mollusk form <laughs> rips Don't its you know way. You shouldn't be messing with powers outside of your into the surface. Uh, I am power. He's saying it's gone to his head. <laughs> <laughs> no, it hasn't. It always does. Mol- Wait, mol- is it like a big c- clam? Uh, octopus. Oh, an octopus. Yes, the kraken. The kraken. The kraken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. So like it's the kraken is rearing its way to life in the middle of this uh, off the side of this amusement park. Are you with trying to destroy your own ship? I'm trying to destroy you. The octopus. You're, you're on board, so you're really good. It's really kind of a bad situation you find yourself in. The, yeah. the tentacles will whisk you away while I sail to safety. Okay. Can I, um, okay, as a security guard, I'm on the deck there. I mean, I'm, I'm right there at the yeah. scene. Mm-hmm. Can I do a wither with the, and view my touch? With well, you the gotta touch it. You gotta touch the octopus. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. if it's on the, is it? Are you gonna just, it's like off the coast, so it's, oh, on, it's in oh, the water. I see, so I can't touch it. Or can I fly? You can, but you're, oh yeah, you can try flying to it. Can I, since I, you got the wings. We can yeah. try. I'll make. I'll make you roll for it. But let's. Okay. Well, first, before let's let's do. We're gonna do um, okay. the equivalent of like initiative, which is yes. everybody's gonna roll. Keep your cool. Now I'll decide like the order that it goes. Sure. So just roll those dice and do a quick keep your cool. Three. So you'll probably won't go that. But you like the last word. Okay. So we got a. So four. It's a three for Salome. A four for Shin. For Shin. Eight. And then what did you get, Diego? Eleven. Okay. Oh man. So Diego's going first. I feel like this is so slick compared to to Merle. <laughs> I always look first. <laughs> yeah. And then a um, James, and the baddies will go last. Oh, and some other stuff might happen as well. So this is giant octopus. You got Gaskins. He was like, his hands trying to glow with arcane energy. His crew is still perhaps in the boat, and there may be other things in the amusement park as well. Uh, Diego. What do you do? All right, so I'm going to spend one corruption for just below the surface. Assume my demon form without a roll and gain all the options listed. So, gain plus one armor, heal two harm, flick plus one harm, and demonic weapon and demonic movement. Whoa, <laughs> so just for, for those of us who are, because it's been a little while, and also because this character is so cool, he described what the demonic form of Captain Diego looks like. If you already guessed, this is a whole big shout out to Pirates of the Caribbean. So, <laughs> yeah. Davy Jones, but as a crab man. <laughs> crab man, I love crab. that. Big old crab claw and shit in this armor and everything. The crab leg, peg leg and everything, yeah. That was my favorite variation of that one too. Okay, you have officially transformed. And I'll say to the gaskets, you seek a p- captain's permission? Well, you did not seek mine. Oh, and I'll charge at him. I'll unleash an attack on him. Damn, all right. So this is plus two. Beat Damn. up this plump middle-aged man. That didn't help at all, that's a five. Oh no, all right. Yeah. So what do you think goes wrong? Hmm. I mean, he is like a super powerful sorcerer himself, so. Maybe we clash swords, like. You actually become the other Davy Jones that was popular in the '60s and become and turned into a part of a musical for some. You mean you're the monkeys? <laughs> you become. <laughs> Which, if somebody in the '60s mentioned Davy Jones, it would, be, it would be a weak, <laughs> cute British dude. <laughs> I don't know if you want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Gaskins raises his uh, 
his, your sword, blocks your attack, and then, sort of underhand, a blast of energy rips into you. It is going to do some damage. Um, it's going to take away your armor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. And as well, you guys are locked in battle. James, what are you doing? Um, let's have some fun with this shotgun. <laughs> ah, fun with shotguns. <laughs> Who are you uh, unloading on? Gaskins. Oh man! <laughs> so as, as he's sort, they're sort of going off, I pull up the shotgun and fire around. So five, six, seven plus blood. That's an eight. Yeah. So. All right. Um, to pick one from the top list. Are we taking terrible harm? I mean, my shotgun already does four harm. Also, <laughs> you want to make it five? <laughs> That's gonna hurt. I mean, he has armored up with magic. Well, a combination of deadly and having a high-powered shotgun. Ouch. Yeah, the shotgun in and of itself does three harm. Add, add my deadly, makes it four harm. All right, you want to take something from him, or um, let's see if I can take the sword away from him. Okay, I will say thanks to that shotgun blast. Um, his magical, he has a lot of magical armor, so it absorbs that, uh, but knocks him down, knocks the wind out of him, and the cutlass falls in his grasp. However, you're either going to take some harm, or be in a bad spot, which I will say, the harm will be, you get zapped by his magic, mm -hmm. or the octopus grabs you and, like, hoist, 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 hoists you aloft in his tentacles. Mm -hmm. Which one of these bad options will you pick? This will be an interesting story. Let's <laughs> let's get hoisted by the octopus. Okay. Yeah, so like after you fire that shotgun, the octopus grabs you, rips you off the deck, and is like carrying you. So basically you. I, I fire off the shot and then see the thing wrapped and I'm like, shit. <laughs> yeah. Classic. In fact, I want you to roll like keep your cool. All right. And we'll see if you can hold on to that shotgun. So, oh, shoot. Okay. Six. Yeah. All right. I'm afraid in the impact, you drop the shotgun. All right. It falls, thankfully not to the water, but somewhere in the amusement park. <laughs> All right. Now, Shins, what are you doing? <laughs> you got one friend. Uh, Gaskins is, like, on the ground, but you got your other, your other pal is in the tentacles. I look over to, um, to our fave friend here. Can you get him? Yeah. I'll... I'm going to, um, I'm going to say, it's calamari time. <laughs> Excellent. I'm drawing my, my sword is drawn. I'm going straight for Gaskins. Okay. So I'm going to go, uh, at least an attack on him. I'm going to go, uh, yeah. take, try to take him down as best I can. Uh, and that's a 10. Nice. Whoa. All right, um, that's what are you going for? He's going to disarm, so I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm just going to do extra harm. So it's five points of harm. Oh, man. We're getting some goodie for territory right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just Brutal. one shot enemies. Yeah, that's the question. <laughs> just this sort of blade that's just kind of misty and form, just slicing through him. All right. I'm going to say, like, you, his magical armor is at this point 100% gone. Mm. So you have uh, you have cut into him. Um, and there is, like, some blood starting to go. And he's, like, holding up his hands. Um, and he's, like whispering something sort of in a, or mouthing the words, or trying to at least, over the rush of battle. Yeah. Um, Salome. Okay, now it's time to get that, get that lime dipping sauce ready. <laughs> oh, oh, delicious. <laughs> and I mean, is this gonna be unleash an attack or let it out? What is the... Well, what, what would you like to do? I'd rather do let it out because that way I do it with spirit and I get two. Um, but I would say if you're if you're actually aiming to you want to do harm, then yes, the I want to do harm. Then yeah. it would be attack. Well, you just try to use then your magic to free him. Huh? You can also try to use your magic to yes. free him from the grass. Um, if you want to do like what? like to save him, yeah. Like if you're using your magic to make the octopus right. let go of him, then it would be let it out. Okay, I see. Well, I want to kill that octopus. Like, oh yes! Yeah. Wow. I don't this is I don't want to I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, James. My mother wants to kill instead of save. Right? I, I, you know, that thing, I don't want to just have, have you be dropped. I want to, I think this is, this needs to be eliminated, okay? Sorry about that. Sorry. So it's going to roll, so it's going to be an attack, so it's, I just get a plus one then for this. Then. Go for okay. it. Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice. Nine tenths. Whoa. Ten times. Nine plus one. So Brutal. Okay. Okay. So, so you can inflict terrible harm on the octopus or okay. take something from it, which could be him. Or it could be something more intangible. Like... I'm going to inflict harm, and so that you, you can, because when he drops you, then you can swim away. <laughs> okay. How much how much harm does, what, does Wither do? Hmm? How much? The, the Wither says, with the, you imbue your touch with the power to kill. It says three harm intimate at. So I don't know. Okay, so now it's five harm. So you're doing terrible harm. Yeah. Okay. So you do, a, yeah, so you like touch the octopus, mm-hmm. the orange mm-hmm. sucker tin skin of this great sea beast. Yes. Just like models, decays, falls apart, turns dead at your touch. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you've done a lot of harm to it. I mean, it's a very yes. big, monstrous creature, so it's right. still around. But yeah, you've heard it for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, now it's it's its turn. Mm-hmm. So okay. its tentacle is going to whip down. Mm-hmm. I want you to roll a keep your cool. And I would like Shin to also roll a keep your cool. That's good. It's a seven. Ten. Okay. You take one level of uh, faint harm. And you're going to go to. You have armor because you're. I do not Shin. have armor. Oh, okay. You're going to take um, the seven. I would say you're going to go up to, uh, to Grievous. Okay. Yeah, and you can write, like, you know, broken rib. Yeah. The tentacle just whips down, like, battering ram style smashes you. With you, it's just trying to, like, squeeze you. So you can write, you know, bruises. As it's just trying to, like, crush you. Mm-hmm. Um, Diego, so. You are, so you're knocked down by that tentacle. You're still on the octopus, working your magic on it. Mm-hmm. It's not quite able to, like, reach the tentacles around to get you. Um... So Diego, you you see that um, Gaskins? He's like sitting up. There's like blood in his mouth, um, and he is like. You realize the letters he is mouthing are F B U P. Go, you, you don't understand the acronym? <laughs> you Apparently giant not. crab! <laughs> That's, That's just it. insulting. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Federal, it's the Bureau! Yeah. Oh. They're Bureau. here! Oh, the Feds. And as you're saying that, you hear uh, alarms coming from off the mm. off on the dock. Mm. And you can see that a, um, a van with those sirens on it, mm. otherwise unmarked, has rolled to a halt, and coming out of it is Alexi Irvin, Special Agent Irvin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Special Agent Belinda Blight might be, is probably in there with him, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, this this uh, Mulder and Scully style teamwork together. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's probably other agents, or they might be scattered around the park. Uh, but they are making an attack on you. Irvin has one of those, like, rocket launchers. <laughs> Those, you know, uh, Vietnam War mm-hmm. era, like, I'm not sure what they're called, but, they, you know, they shoot out. Mm-hmm. The, the rocket launcher that shoots a rocket. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's a rocket launcher. Exactly. A rocket <laughs> is a missile know, launcher. A missile launcher, a bazooka. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. If you, Anti-tank if you, weapon range. Anti-tank weapon. If you, if you know all the, the official term of whatever wacky weapon that was, <laughs> uh, please let us know. I'm sure I'm sure James would know the exact, like, numbers oh, and letters. Sure. That yeah, James yeah. would know exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so I want you to really keep your cool as a rocket is fired at you. Uh, Two, five, seven, nine. Okay. I will say uh, one level of faint harm. Uh, I can take that. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you're a really tough ghost, but a tough ghost. The rocket still smashes into your crab form, and, like, it knocks you back. Can't stop that. Uh, but you do, but you do. If you're able to resist the actual damage, mm-hmm. no, and what did they do that for? Agent Irvin is like, stand down, step away from the yacht. Mm-hmm. You are under arrest. Mm-hmm. Federal Alex, Bureau of Unexplained Phenomenon. Alex Gaskins is the reason why we're here. He has the sword, the item that it, that we were looking for. Gaskins is the reason why we're here. Mm-hmm. Also, it's kind of hard for you to shout when an octopus is <laughs> crushing you. Can I grab the sword? Well, on your turn. Okay. It is now Diego's oh, turn. So, so but yeah, you're coming up. Oh, you can't grab the sword. I have an idea. I have an idea. I have an idea. I have an idea. I have an idea as well. <laughs> get, get out of here. 
Yeah. I can get the son of a bitch too. Okay. You're both like lying on the deck. He's <laughs> like, we can do this, right? <laughs> we can do this. Get me the sword. <laughs> then the sword's, the sword's on the ground. I don't have it. Okay. <laughs> I grab the sword. Cool. Thank <laughs> you. All right. <laughs> I'm going to use the sword to take control of the Kraken. Okay. <laughs> It's gonna require you to do. I would say let it out. Make this one because like, take hold of something definite. Right. Oh come on. And that's a five. Damn. Yeah, it, I'd say it could be done. Maybe like you gotta get closer, or the incant, or you gotta like invest more energy. Mm. You can see like the blade. The cutlass is this again amazingly well preserved. Definitely magical artifact. You know the curved cutlass that no self-respecting pirate. Well, that would, I shouldn't say that because you're a very self-respecting pirate. Excuse you got a cool, axe. you got a cool old boarding axe. It's a great, but it's a this great is one. a very cool cutlass. And I don't actually use swords all too much. <laughs> all right. Um, so yeah, like the blade starts to glow, but it's something is wrong, and the octopus is not stopping. Right. James, you are still in the tentacles. Mm-hmm. Um. So you said that I can't really talk very much, so I'm just gonna use my book learning. To see if there's a way that I can kill this Kraken. That is a ten. Nice. Whoa. Wait. Nope. Sorry. Nine. Yeah. Still good. Still good. Still, okay. still good. I would say it can be harmed, and a lot of damage can be done with your weapons. That would drive it into the sea, but to truly destroy it, it's got to be taken out by the weapon that summoned it. Ah, shit. All right. Sword to take it out. Are you gonna try and wriggle free or do anything else while you're in the um, Yeah, I got my staff. Let's see if if a bladed cold iron staff will that technically enchanted, but I sort of I wasn't sure what enchanted meant in the Like it new magical one. could hurt magical enemies, could hurt ghosts and other oh, okay. uh, you know, spirits. Okay. Intangible things, I think. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, because I wasn't sure what anchored meant. Yeah. So. <laughs> but anyways, I sort of flavored it in my head that like that was the reason why it was extendable. Ooh, so, no, yeah, I love it. It's like cool yeah. like hey, every monster hunter needs one. Yeah. Collapsible staff. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to just jab the one one of the blades and into it. So yep. why you gotta spin? <laughs> <laughs> uh that's just barely seven. Okay. You gotta do some talk do some harm, take something. You could take yourself. Yeah, let's free myself. So All right. Jam. So I will say you do. How much damage does it do? Um, by itself, the staff does two, but because I'm deadly, it does three. Nice. Hey. That tentacle is like cut clean through. And uh, yeah, you you fall down. The problem is you got to either take some harm or be in a bad spot, which will be like in the ocean near more tentacles. Um, or do you want to just take some harm and fall on the deck? Uh, let's just say I don't do a very graceful landing and mm-hmm. take a little bit of harm. All right, you're gonna do one more of a uh, grievous, or no? You, this that, is your first. That grievous. goes into pretty grievous. Yeah. I'm yeah. Grievous. Um, a broken leg is probably not as too big. That's, yeah, that's a. Little... Yeah, I would say. Um, so you're gonna be a sprain. Yeah, a sprain makes sense. You're gonna be like limping, but you can still move. But yeah, it hurts. <laughs> and yeah, you fall on the deck and join the rest of these guys, except for our uh, our All fairy right. friend there. Sword is needed to kill it. Okay. Yeah. Well. Okay. Uh, sword? Well, Shin is, yeah. Shin is next. Well, yeah. perhaps it takes the power of the living to actually make it work. Yeah. I was gonna kill it with it. <laughs> oh. You're just gonna kill it? I mean, that's what he said to do. It's a beautiful creature, though, lad. <laughs> <laughs> you say that. But you look like a crab. No, I'm I don't. To see life. Uh, I'm going to. Is is there any like tentacle coming close enough that I can stab at it with a sword? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna attempt to make a stab. Uh, that's a nine. Hey. Okay. You plunge the sword in. Uh, it's definitely doing some damage. Okay. Um, I will say, do you want to inflict terrible harm? Take something from it. I'm gonna say it's gonna it's gonna take like maybe a turn to really ram it in and hold it in place, but you can definitely see this octopus is starting to fall apart. Um I guess if I'm I'm gonna try to hold on to it, so I guess I'm gonna find myself in a bad position as in 
I am immobilized while trying to take this creature down for my next turn. Uh, well, I think the bad position is that you have the sword wedged in there, and the tentacle whips out. Okay. So you're dangling from the sword as it's like flailing right? around. Okay. I've always wanted to do this in a film. <laughs> a very Ahab and Moby Dick kind of thing. Okay. Oh. Uh, next up, Salome. Speaking of Moby Dick, question. I can, it says I can summon an element of nature. Does that include an animal? Uh, I'll say so. I mean, you're a fairy, you're in touch with nature, so okay. animals are a part of that. Well, as we know, one of the animals that does kill Kraken is, giant sper is a sperm whale. A giant sperm whale. Oh, God! A huge sperm whale. <laughs> the Moby Dick of Moby Dicks. <laughs> Summon the white whale! <laughs> this is a regular Clash of the Titans. You're right. What so, is happening here? <laughs> so I'm going to say, this, this may up, end up being the, say, the best story that, of, of any Slayer. <laughs> say, for your first, 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 first one. one. <laughs> I know. So, I'll say, save the, so I'm going to say, save the whales. Whales, save us. <laughs> All right. Tumble Tuesday night for me. <laughs> roll, roll, let it out. Okay, seven. Nice. I get seven plus. I guess plus this. Beard. Plus spirit, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine. Seven, ah. nine. All right, with a nine, you don't get Moby Dick. Oh. Or a giant Moby Dick. You do get Shamu. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's still pretty big, though. That's, yeah, orcas are pretty, orcas pretty cool. Are, orcas are deadly, man. Absolutely. So, not the biggest whale, but a very tough orca comes raging out of the water. It's a sweet flip. <laughs> and then slams and bites into the side of this octopus and just rips a big chunk of it off. The octopus is writhing, clearly uh, clearly near death. In fact, I will say you can just stay on for a bit. Okay. This will put it in. So let's have, um, it's kind of the octopus's turn. Let's have you really keep your cool. Ooh, Just buddy. stay on. Ooh, buddy. Ooh, buddy. Five. Oh, man. All right. You lose your grip. Yep. The oh sword is in the is in yeah. the tentacle. You mm. fall down, and you crash mm. next to the van. Mm. I'm gonna have you take one more level of harm. Mm. That's it. That's put me at two points of grievous. Ah, all right, and you land at the feet of Agent Belinda Blight, mm. who is coming out of the van right now. As uh, currently her her partner, her junior partner, um, Irvin. I was trading the rocket launcher for like an, an M60, a big old machine gun <laughs> that he's now getting ready to cover the uh, the boat with. Blight like puts her her boot like on your chest, mm. um, and she's like, "Would it help if I said you were under arrest?" <laughs> Would it help if I said I usually pay for this sort of service? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, gonna get you shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, she smiles. She's like, I, I like you. <laughs> Slow down, put the cuffs on, though. That's fine. Uh, can I actually use my invocation? To are you going? What's are you? I'm going to cash in my debt with Doc Shock and just think. Great, I have to go see him now. I'm going to say, I'm not, I'm not going to say the name out loud. Uh, I'm going to think it and say Doc Schlock, and I'm going to vanish. <laughs> As I am summoned to him. <laughs> so I'm out of the scene, you guys. Sorry. Right. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just peaced out like, I'm not getting arrested. Boom. Yeah. All right, you disappear. Mm. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Blight is like a little bit, or Irvin's upset, and Blight's like, hey, in this line of work, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> and she is mean, so... As you pin his smoke demon down. <laughs> he is meanwhile getting his machine gun to cover everybody mm. up on the deck there. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the crew of the Andromeda has raised their hands. All right, so, Diego, we'll go back to you. All right, Swords so... Swords in there, octopus is weakened. One more blow should finish it off. The sword... The octopus is weakened, you say. I'm going to possess the octopus. <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> I want you to roll let it out. This is, a, this is a lot trickier than possessing Johnny Kappa, but it can't be. I can that. just mark corruption for it, if it's weak-minded. Uh, uh, if you still want me to let it out, though. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what. I'll just do let it out, unless it's a, a, a fail, you'll do it. Because right. it's already been, like, physically weakened by all these blows, so... That's a six, that's already good. That's a three, that's an eleven. Nice. All right, yeah, you super possess it. So it suddenly freezes and stops. The orca, like, floats back a little surprised. It realizes something has changed. Mm -hmm. All right, and now the Kraken pieces out. 
waves goodbye. See ya. <laughs> yeah. And you don't just... fire upon all of these people. They didn't know what they were getting into. Cracker rumbles from the deep. Yeah, it just talks. <laughs> and then it just goes under the waves and vanishes. He's out. <laughs> all right, so you two are anymore. the only ones left. Okay. The FBI swarm, uh, the FBUP swarm the deck. And you two are hauled back down to the van where uh, Belinda is waiting. Irvin is like, he's keeping you. I mean, he's like, you know, the gun's at his side. He's not aiming it at you guys, but it's definitely there. Alex? And he's like, James, you, you sure stepped in it this time, didn't you? Hey, I just thought I I was just going for the, that sword that is now attached to a Kraken that is not gone. So you wait. We're going to, I'm going to pull that sword out, by the way. Just oh, yeah. Gingerly. Okay. All right. We'll we'll check back. We'll we'll check back what you guys do in a second. That means I might not get paid for this job. Um, no, Irvin's no, like, well, look. At least tell me you got some good. Do you any good intelligence over at uh, over at Lord Lars or with this whole thing, this whole experience? You get anything I could use? Well, Gaskins was the real person that we were looking for. He, uh, he was just looking for power. Apparently. Gaskins. Mm -hmm. And Blight's like, Gaskins is a paid federal informant. Son of a bitch. Oh. Yeah. He's not, I mean, like most CIs, not the most pleasant of individuals, but... He's also power hungry. Yeah. Yeah, well, name me quite a few CIs who aren't. Hmm. Something Maybe tells me... I'm not uh, that power hungry, and I can work with you guys. I don't know, that's cool. Well, Blight's like, well, you can be the exception that proves the rule. Look, in our business, you gotta rub elbows with some unsavory, be unsavory people. And Gaskins... You do realize that Gaskins almost killed a whole bunch of people with that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Blight's like, we may have to reassess this, but... At least he gives us a lot of good information. Oh, At we're arresting him, alright. Mm -hmm. uh, Irvin, go bring that, oh. that doughy clown down here. Mm -hmm. So Irvin goes over, gets him, and like puts the cuffs off and then drags oh, him back. By the way... Apparently all of his information is coming from a ghost. <laughs> well, it's like a ghost, you say. Like, yeah, it's some quite interesting. ghost of some, like, wannabe enchanter dude. I can't remember his name. Actually, I, I'm sure my character would actually remember his name, but I, so I'm Prince, blanking. Right. Yeah, Prince Francis Flood. Drake. I can't yeah. Francis name. Flood. Uh, Francis, or Francis Flood. Flood. Yes. Freaking right. Flood. Uh, Flood, I know. Yeah. Getting you back way beyond the Ghost missed in one hand. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So he was, I mean, they they, pretty, they they didn't kill him, but they were around when he was not a ghost. Yeah, no. Um, Gaskins is we like, this is a... Did we? Didn't we? No, I don't, I don't think know. we did. We not, the, not the second we, one? We de-handed him. I don't we think we did. No. You ended up, you made, you made a, a tense alliance with him. Yes. At the end, yeah. yeah. So, so Gaskins, is, he's like shoved into the back, and he's like, My civil liberties, my religious rights will not be abridged. You cannot cage a great mind and such, and then he's just like, shut up, and they throw him in the back. Um, so Belinda turns to you, Salome, and she's like, Salome, Salome, Salome. We're a long way from, uh... You know everyone? Jeez. Oh, I know everyone. A long way from the quad, aren't we? Yeah, a long, long way from Berkeley, and, and you're working for that guy who likes to hang around in a... In a dress <laughs> and get dirt on <laughs> on on everyone with his secret files and, and, and you know the amount of times that you reference that Michael is astounding. Yeah, we, we get every time Hoover shows up, we gotta you know the, the dresses come out yep. too. I gotta say, always big reference, and I find it so funny that you want to do too. <laughs> Well, so, you know, it's what you know about Hoover. He That's was true. a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Blight's like, yeah, I, I did always wonder why that, that kind of his rotund secretary is just in there, and he's not sometimes. <laughs> Very strange. But look, our friends all have flaws. Some of us are men who are a little paranoid and like to wear dresses. Others are ageless fairy beings from other dimensions who are trying to take over America. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about you and your friend over here. And maybe even your friend who teleported away. <laughs> he's definitely on the FBUP's radar. Oh, he's probably over, over at Schloss's place. Mm, maybe I'll sound someone to go pick him up. <laughs> Unless, <Cow> Salome, <laughs> we can come to some kind of arrangement. Or you could tell me a, a I reason. Have a 
why I shouldn't haul you in to make this official. I think this. Honestly, you you owe me more than I owe you. To haul me in to make yeah. this. Um, you you and Mr. Called around here, your monster hunting friend. Um, to make this official. So, would you like like some dirt on um on someone? I mean, gosh, this would be this. Um. Like It'd be we'll useful. You could offer a dirt on some other, like Claggett or yeah. Uh, uh, well, no, well, like what about Lord Lars? Oh, you could do that. Okay. That's definitely going against. Going uh, I know that Lord Lord Lars, I could say, has been in the um, in the back of his place. He's been doing. He's been doing a little bit of selling some fairy dust. <laughs> She's like, hmm, hmm. well, we can't have is, that. And, um, you know, and I could tell you some information about when his, when those, connect, when his connections are being dropped off, some of that. Ooh, uh, all right, she'll buy that. You know, uh, happening, if you could kind of let us go, that way we can sort of figure out exactly when those, um, that's going to be happening, and then we can meet maybe, um, at the Troubadour in uh, in a week when um, Elton John is going to be performing there, and uh, <laughs> she's like, "Hey, you know I love Elton." <laughs> John, million dollar piano. I mean, come on, um, and um, get you you know the strip, and I'll just meet you right there, behind, maybe like behind the alley there, and during intermission, and I can. Do a little um, pass some information about that. What's going on? With the, well, with sounds the like a plan. Hmm. And uh, even if we can't get anything on Lord Lars, yes, I don't. Because I'll be honest with you, I don't really want to send a fairy lord to the clink. Yeah. But the threat of it will scare him and turn him, mm -hmm. and that is much more interesting to me. Yeah. So, you guys will never hear, and you're free to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And if you ever need me. I'm sure Alex knows how to contact me. Absolutely. So as you guys walk away... My extended family has worked with you guys. Mm, not the, That's true, not the first time. So, as you're walking away, uh, we'll kind of sort of start, start drawing this one to a close. I will say that we'll kind of go around and you can tell me some, uh, some kind of final things your characters do. But I will say that thanks to your efforts, Pagan Pirate Sail for Satan is released and is a, well, not a hit. I mean, <laughs> not a flop, but not but, a But hey, you know, it makes, it makes some money, which is maybe what Doc Schlock wants. And I've <laughs> tried my best, but there's no saving that catastrophe. But you do get a nice producer's credit. <laughs> so as those credits roll, let me go around. Maybe we're starting with. Um, so what you're saying is that the sword did eventually get back to Doc Schlock, so we all got paid. We yes. all did our job. Well, he paid you. Did I sort it back? Did you, did, oh, you, no. did you lend it to him at least for the filming? I am going to lend it to him, but I am going to be the one wielding the sword. Nice. Invisibly. Oh, okay. Whoa. Interesting. All right. Possessing Pagan, people while they're fighting. Yes. Pagan Pirate Sail for Satan is, becomes like a huge sword fighting movie. <laughs> as well great. as like... It's great. <laughs> as well as a dreamy, ghostly energy that's like Suspiria. <laughs> that sounds like a grindhouse stuff. I know, honest. exactly. It's like a pretty good one to be too. <laughs> People, all their, all their critics are like, well, the plot doesn't make much sense, but the dreamy atmosphere makes it feel like you're living a nightmare. So and most really importantly, good. it is credited as... Fiction. <laughs> yes. Historical yeah. fiction. <laughs> Definitely more not fiction. historical fiction, just Based fiction. On, certain, on historical events. Loosely. <laughs> loosely. Loosely. Yes. Very kind, loose. Kind of. There is a kind of based on a true story at the bottom of the character. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> As all, I, well, anything based, based on, on a true story can be many things. Yes. Can be a based spectrum. on a true story. Yeah. Yeah. Story. Story. by Captain <laughs> Pete. <laughs> so, let's go around and starting with, uh, with James Calderon sure. there. And I sort of want to know, we don't really do the, uh, the end of the session moves, there's like a, a one shot. Though I do hope these characters show up in the future, because we have some awesome. very cool characters. I like Shin. I think mm -hmm. Shin's definitely going to pop up again. Ooh, yeah, yeah. cool. James, Maybe in our uh, Belfast, or in like our... Yeah. 
our New York 1977 one shot yeah. coming up. Excited that's, that's, about that's that. That's the beauty of having a possessed sword. Whose hands are going to fall in? Oh, mm -hmm. that's a really cool what idea. Other, the sword. What other, things, what other secrets does it hold? Captain yeah. yeah. Diego might show up one more time, but he's got one last corruption level. Oh, no. Before this pirate turns evil. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start with James. What, what happens to you, I guess, the 60s and... And the um, hangover decade of the 70s <laughs> It's America. Well, I think James definitely is able to take on a lot more, with his first story being the way it was, he definitely got a lot more like higher risk jobs, um, especially he, he definitely made a, made a name for himself among his family and sort of in terms of like turning a shit job into something amazing. <laughs> Oh, absolutely! Yeah, this this I would say is quite, quite the first day on, on the on the, uh, yeah. first day at work. So he eventually sort of he he does a few more jobs with with the bureau, if whenever they they called on him, um, and he he does I think eventually meet his cousin his like his extended cousin, um, and I think she. I mean, unless unless Dallas says otherwise, I get the feeling she might be very proud of what he's been, what he's become. Oh, so. nice. So. Yeah, we'll we'll, do, we'll check in with Dallas and we like mm -hmm. weave these characters together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, I like it. But yeah, but it, he may come out um, in another another thing, maybe even another season. Ooh, we'll cool. So, so that's going to be older and maybe more grizzled. Mm. So interesting. What happens to uh, to Shin? Um, Shin goes on and keeps on enforcing, especially working with Doc Schloss and um, Doc Schloss and a bunch of other people. Uh, but eventually, the, uh, the the contract between uh, Daniel Dunn and uh, uh, Lars ends, and the sword is returned. We hand it off to the next patron, who is going to wield it. Uh, while Daniel Dunn is not sure how to live a life after being Shin. Kind of the whole point is you raise your identity, become Shin, become a Shinigami. Um, but maybe he thinks he wants to get back into the monster hunting gig. It was a life he enjoyed beforehand. It's a life he still enjoys. Mm. And he always had, he always, he always has a place in it by the by James' side. So. Oh, yeah. cool! So a friendship remains. Yep. How about mm -hmm. Salome? What happens to her, her in the seventies? Well, well, I guess basically after she goes to Altamont and gets. Um, oh man! <laughs> and, and loses oh. Her, her and loses her hippie innocence. Oh no! <laughs> oh. Drifts around for for a while. Works gets a job at, at Disneyland at <laughs> doing, oh. the, <laughs> doing 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 the Tinkerbell. <laughs> oh, perfect! Oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> perfect job for a parent. Run from, from the castle <laughs> too. But you know, minimum wage type. Oh, just working minimum wage. wage. Yeah. <laughs> you should have seen me back when, sweetie. <laughs> I'm sure Perse Persephone Blight, uh, or at least the rat known as Persephone Blight, is very sympathetic towards her cause. Is that was that the uh, cat's character's name, Persephone? Yeah, Blight? the the real one for, for yeah. Berman Rose. Yeah. Yes, your dad tries to live in a commune for a little bit, which oh, falls yeah. apart. Goes too. bad. Uh -huh. bad. It falls apart and it ends up becoming, rehab. Well, rehab, and then it ends up becoming a part owner in a disco roller rink. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. I, I'm gonna have to have this disco show this disco show up in some form in the future. Who says if it's in LA? It could be somewhere else. Yeah. All right. So we list up, we list we last left Diego. He was under the water piloting this giant. <laughs> He's Jaeger cracking the Kraken. Yeah. <laughs> what uh? What happens then? Well, I gotta say one thing first. Are you keeping Quincy Claggett alive? <laughs> yes. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot kill him. You cannot kill one of our longest running characters so, off screen. So, so what? What is literally the one thing? So that he's around for. What he's saying is that eventually one of the arcs are gonna have to protect Quincy Claggett from the vengeful ghost after you lose control when it becomes corrupted fully. Pretty much. I yeah. might do that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But oh it's got to another kill thing. Diego. Oh no. Unfortunately uh, well, I, I would if you say, you know, I would but uh yeah. But unfortunately cool he couldn't keep the Kraken alive. Oh. Fortunately, the Kraken 
Well, he's a ghost. You know? <laughs> so I mean, the ghost crack. And it's a supernatural thing too. Oh, so man. Diego offers him, you know, a little job if he can communicate with the Kraken, which I'm sure he can. A hundred years aboard the time. <laughs> the Kraken just obviously agrees. It's like if you understand. <laughs> yes, but not aboard the time. You too big. You won't fit. But we're going to go around helping folks. It, supernatural folks, you know. You know. Finding their places in life and helping them move on. But there's one man in particular that I want. Not aboard the tide. We're gonna fashion him to the front mass. <laughs> but can you help me take him down? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> the Kraken agrees. Oh my gosh. And that is where we're going to draw this episode to a close. Yes. yes. This was a lot of fun. I love these characters. Yeah. This is great. And the I, Davy Jones parallel runs for a circle. Oh, I have yes, the Kraken. You actually now. have the Kraken. You can now release the Kraken. You can truly release, 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 release the Kraken. It's so crack. cool. <laughs> so, next time we'll be back <laughs> on our. This is a very warm jacket. Yeah. <laughs> this is a warm jacket. We'll be back with our, uh, our original game. Uh, our 1952 arc for episode three. Oh yeah, uh, which is going to be in Las Vegas. I have a I have a costume already for it. Uh, Everybody has have, a Vegas costume, right? I'm I'm very I'm hoping uh, Michael, our uh, our vampire Max will return. Max King. Yep. So we'll have that completing our uh, our foursome here. And are we doing uh, are we doing costumes for since we Halloween? Oh yeah, I guess it will be. We'll all be in a like I have like a, a croupier kind of getup for you know for Vegas. Yeah, really spend Halloween in Vegas uh, <laughs> next week on no, Generation Shadow. Costumes are encouraged, people. Mm. That's what can give people at home. Encouraged. Definitely just from costume watch us. But I want to give want to give a big thanks to my special star, <laughs> my, uh, yes. my special guest star, the woman who who gave me life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for bringing me into this this world here and for joining us tonight. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for playing. Everybody's been amazing. Um, this was a very creepy, off episode, and <laughs> yeah. I freaking loved it. Uh, so thanks, everyone, for supporting us and hanging out with us. If you don't see us locally, you can see us online and all that good stuff. Um, but make sure between now and then, you pull up a chair. And, and make time, time to tabletop. tabletop. Everybody have a good night. Good night, good folks. Night.